right, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the Road Podcast. Uh, this is DJ Crooked. I got DJ Neva. Yo, what up? DJ D Miles. Good afternoon. And we got Jamie the Great. Yeah. We got a special host today, the homie, Eddie McDonald. What's up? Jersey, dirty Jersey in the building. <laughs> and then we got a special, special, special guest, New York legend, straight from Canarsie, Brooklyn, one half of Crooklyn clan. We got Mr. DJ Scissorhands in the building. What up, yeah. sis? My man, my man. How you guys doing oh, today? It's good, man. All right. All right. Staying man. alive, baby. Staying alive. Staying alive. Oh. How you feeling with this Vegas heat right now? Because you you actually just moved to Vegas. I got here May 1st, man. And uh, I, I love this heat, to be honest with you. Better I, than the humidity. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. Y'all been getting some humidity lately, though. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for the most part, the dry heat is a lot easier to deal with. Hey, I mean, shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how New York heat is right now, but I just remember being in subways and that shit is the worst. Oh my god, mm-hmm. nothing feels worse than a subway. And just having like sweaty balls, sweaty everything, <laughs> and then being on that platform and then like Wait for that train, and then oh, no, being worst, crammed man. with everyone uh, in the, the train, train comes and it shoots that that funk down yeah, the yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah. funky. And, and you see those big ass rats uh, running uh, around the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> let me disclaim something real quick. If I sound a little funny, I just got a tooth pulled about. An hour and a half ago, so just want to patient. let everybody know that real quick. He's gonna put it under his pillow today. <laughs> yeah, I, damn right. <laughs> so you've been here since May. May first, man. What made you come out here? Just I just felt like it. I got rid of my girlfriend, and uh, I was like, <laughs> that is, that'll do it. No, I'm, the thing is, is living out here is really, really. I mean. It's, you get so much bang for your buck out here. Even with the market going up, yeah, New yeah. York done gone crazy. New York and LA are like both in that bracket of go- It's nuts. It's too it's yeah. just wrong, man. It's wrong. So I don't agree with it. And you know, I said, let me try the West Coast. Mm-hmm. You know, I I could live anywhere. Most of my money gets made online. So yeah, yeah. it was an easy transition. I said, let me come over here. And I'm digging it, man. I like it. Where were you living in in uh in New York? Or in I was New- out of New York uh, about five years ago and into PA with the shorty, this ex, my ex-girlfriend. In Pennsylvania? Yes, sir. Oh, what part? Like right in the outskirts of Philly near uh, Westchester. Like, okay. It's like a college town over there. Definitely way too small for me. You know, different kind of lifestyle altogether. What'd I wasn't... you do, like open a bakery? What would you do? Just do that? <laughs> <laughs> Why, because I'm Italian? I got to open a bakery? <laughs> nah, that's not what I meant. <laughs> did you, man? Listen, nah, actually what I did... I, I'm Korean. I opened a sweatshop. Yeah, I was going to hit you with it. <laughs> I was going to hit you with it, but I decided to leave it alone. He but, opened uh, a pizzeria. In any case, yeah, so it was... Um, you know, I just went out there and did what I do. You yeah. know, I didn't DJ at all. I, I just, I really got... The whole DJing thing got tired for me. Cause I don't have patience for promoters, man. I just mm-hmm. don't. Shady shit only goes so far with me, and then it stops right there. So we have a, we have an interesting history, you and I, and I don't know if you remember back in New York. <laughs> All right, tell me about it. Okay, wait. <laughs> but I also I don't honestly. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> nah, I right. remember you DJing at uh, one, and yeah, you yeah. were nasty as fuck back in the days. So then you disappeared, yeah. and I was like, okay, <laughs> he went to go get his money in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at you, baby. Did it right. Well, how did you and Eddie meet? Because y- y'all just met. I, how did y'all know? I each smoke other? a lot of pot. I used to, so I don't really remember how I met. Him. I think the first time that Sis and I met each other, we had Riz at uh, Jet, and you came to a few of those Jet was parties. It, was I, it, I remember walking, wasn't staggering. In Vegas. We knew each other, but I was in Vegas since '02. I was with Mad, with Mad Miles since the '90s. Bro. I know, but I knew Mad Miles through Johnny. Okay, we, so you know, but I don't I, know, man. It's a rough, no. I think it was probably to <laughs> either really? late '90s. We probably had some run-ins in New York. We were probably doing some was bad fueled stuff by terrible things. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I do remember walking drunk through this the halls of uh, the Mirage. And uh, and you just being Crooklyn Clan, motherfucker. Yes, sir. Fucking <laughs> Vegas ain't fucking ready. And Riz is just walking around shaking his head, like, "What am I gonna do with him?" He's a very, he's a very, he's a very relaxed individual. <laughs> it's yeah, so yeah. funny. You guys are like polar opposites. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's amazing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Nev, you've been in New York. I mean, I mean, we're from New York. Yeah. But you never ran into Sis know, ever. We probably ran. Knew the same people, but we never like I've never met you before. You're from the Bronx, right? Yeah, yeah. that's probably why I really didn't get. I wasn't didn't mix a lot with people in the Bronx because I wasn't at every. I mean, but I was I was DJing in Manhattan also because I had met Riz. I know you was playing in Manhattan, like 
late 90s. You were playing for like Bronx promoters, right? Not really. No. I was doing Bill, like, were you playing like Bill Spector parties? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Just, damn, I don't remember. That's what I'm saying. We probably I was saw in them each circles, other, but we yeah. just didn't like know each other. It just like wasn't, that. never happened. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Shit, man. So tell us about our story. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah. I was now, just about to say. What I make? What I make a Chinese joke or something? Nah, you mad at me? <laughs> oh my God. it's it's a great story. Okay, please do. It's a great story. I'm trying to think what's like the nicest, <laughs> nicest, shortest way to do. It. Okay, so I there was Sundays at one. I used to go all the time. Yeah. Sundays at one was popping, and it was with a house DJ. And this is probably 2000. Five, four, 2004 and it was when there was a house DJ that would play and then there was a hip hop DJ that would play and the hip hop DJ was uh, Finesse and Finesse is super talented so he's fucking incredible uh, and I think it was still like kind of semi vinyl times it was vinyl it times it was vinyl definitely. Yeah, yeah and I was one of the I, in New York, it, I, me, Rock the Con, uh, Todd Malice, and a couple other people were like the only, the Ellie Escobar were like the first dudes on Serato. So I think, uh, fuck, was it Joey? Fuck, who was the Marcy? Joey, Joey Marcy. Marcy yeah, yeah, Joey Marcy. Joe Marcy. Joey Marcy. Uh, he heard me somewhere. He heard me at PM, maybe. And he's like, you know, like, he always reminded me of that dude from, oh, man. The guy from uh, shit. He he would do all the Ocean's Eleven. He produced them. Uh, oh he, oh, he uh, Jerry Weintraub. Jerry Wein. Yeah, he yeah, used yeah. to talk like, hey, uh, and he's good for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jerry Weintraub. He used to always talk he's like, amazing. You know, like, that's so funny. Oh, Crooky, you're so you're so good. You gotta come do my party. <laughs> yeah. You know, like come over here, have a good time. You'll see, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, of course. Of it's course. like it's not. It's no stress. It's amazing. nothing. <laughs> just come over here, have a drink, and talk with me. And like he would just do that. Joey Morrissey. Yeah, he would. He remind me of. He's Jerry not even Weintraub. Italian. Yeah, but he <laughs> sounds like Jerry Weintraub. This is Nick Papa Giorgio from yeah. Yuma. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, what do you call it? So I I did one night there, but I did the whole night. So they they tried me out, and when I tried out, I didn't realize I was taking Finesse's job away. DJ Finesse, because that was his night. So it was Finesse's hip. He was the hip hop dude. And I was like, it was like the Serato age coming in where a one DJ could do a house set and he could do hip hop and he could play rock and everything. Right. So they were going to consolidate DJs? Or it was something? consolidating yeah. DJs. They just realized the house was worthless. An open format DJ could rock the whole room yeah, the whole right. night. Right, right. You didn't need a house guy to play it. Like a hip hop dude could probably play house quicker, faster, and, sure. and just run through shit. Right. So that was like, like you know, me, Rock, Ellie, all those dudes. We were kind of like the new age of just those guys that were playing like every genre, like literally open format. Right. So I think I did the first one, then they came and they had me do the second one, and then I think in the second or third one, like finesse, I felt like I don't know, like I was mad young, like no one knew about me, and uh, and I think finesse, you and Riz showed up to the third one or second one. And I was like super nervous. And I think Sean Perry was with me. He's like, yo, that's fucking scissor hands and Riz. And then I was like, damn, man, I'm like fucking nervous. And then. Um, Did you play any Quicklin Clan? Huh? Well, of course. You, just, you have to play <laughs> Quicklin Clan, not? bro. But I was fucking nervous. And I'm then, dying to hear where this goes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember <laughs> any of this right now. So, so like, check what the hell is he talking about? I do remember this so, story. So now, check this. Yeah. At, so then at the end of the night or like sometime before the next week uh joey comes up to me he calls me he's like hey so scissor hands they're saying that you kind of came in and disrespect the finesse and took his gig scissor hands he said or some he, they said whatever they said like hey like uh these guys want to kind of like you know scissor hands wants to do a night and he and he, he constantly wants to like you know he wants to do a night there and he wants to kind of like you know, he wants to try it out. So I was like, yo, dope. Like, I don't I don't care. Like, cool. You know, like, let, let him do it and shit. And then we came through. He and said he, me? Yeah, well, uh, he said you wanted to do the night. But he said that, uh, no, no, no. He didn't say I, I disrespected. You told me that later. A little bit. And then you did the night and it was dope. You did the night. It was dope. And I I'm, played there? Yeah. You, you did it. <laughs> Damn. <man. laughs> My man, I love you. Thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the memories of, that I had. No, 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 and the no. reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so then, so you play that the next weekend, 
And I'm, you know, me and Sean were like fans, so we're like, yo, let's go and listen to Sizz. And we went to listen, and it was the first time I ever heard anyone play um, Oh What a Night. And I was like, damn, man, I got to throw this shit in my set. Like, this is that's fucking dope. Uh, and then Joey was like, yeah, we'll have you come back next week, and we'll, you know, we'll keep it going or whatever. And then I came back the next week, and then you were there. with I, I don't know if Riz was there also, but you were there, and then you came up to me. And they say, yo, you know what, man? You got it, kid. Like, you earned your, you earned your spot here. Sounds like something I would say. And then I was like, oh, okay. I was, like, confused. And I was like, all right. And then it's like, yo, but the way you did it was a little disrespectful, man. But, like, yo, you, you, you're good and you're talented. You earned your spot. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, all right, cool. And I was confused. And then you bounced. And then I talked to Joey after. And I was like, yo, sis, talk to me about, like, I was disrespectful. And he's like, nah, man, they just thought... The way you we hired you and you came in, they felt like you undercut finesse, and he was like, and they they kind of wanted to get finesse's gig back, something like that. I wish I could tell you I remember this. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. I wish I could, and but to me that it don't... just makes me feel even more insignificant. But it's cool. No <laughs> way. <laughs> That's it. The shades are going back on. I can't look at this motherfucker. Right no, seriously. Let me tell you the truth. Because it took me a hard time to get over it. Listen, you know what I remember with you? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I remember. Mike Durani. Remember Mike Durani? He was my road manager. You probably don't remember. He was like the kid with the big lips selling coke to everybody in the room. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. But um, <laughs> I remember him saying, Sis, did you see this flyer? And I was like, let me see the flyer. And it said DJ Crooklyn on oh, it. Okay, so this is what Riz told me later. But go ahead, yeah. Go so ahead. I was like, what? I was like, who's that? <laughs> and he's like... That's DJ Crooked. I was like, no way. Why would he change his name to Crooklyn? Nah. What are you talking about? And I'm like, I, I have no idea about this. And I'm like, why would he do that? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. And the road manager was like, oh, he's trying to, you know, whatever. So we went to Joey Morrissey. I do. This is the only thing I uh -huh. remember. <laughs> like, what is this? And he's like, I don't know. Maybe it's a print error. And I think it was a print yeah, error. It was a print error, yeah. Okay, wow. so, but but see, now that, yeah. that is the only history. This whole okay. finesse story, I don't even remember finesse playing at one. I remember <laughs> you playing. He doesn't no, even no. remember him playing at one. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't remember myself Amazing. Playing. I felt so bad because finesse was so fucking good. And he's still incredible. He's, in, he's uh, bananas. He's, he's incredible. Insane, yeah. And I was he's like, a good dude, and I felt like one of those dudes that I hated, like that came in and undercut. But I didn't even undercut him. They actually paid me like more because they were like, not the disc, but I'm just saying like they had a DJ, they had a hip hop budget and a house budget. And they were like, let's just pay three, One, three, three quarters, quarters of this of budget, instead yeah. of the 100%. Right. And then mm -hmm. now we got the same dude. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I mean, at the time I was like, damn, man, like that's crazy. Like we didn't, I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, damn, man, I hope I didn't do it. So I like, was never mad at you. Yeah, yeah, I no. don't feel like I was ever, I don't, like, I came out here, like, oh, I can't wait I to go hear these guys play. Yeah, yeah, no, I like, don't know. If I, there's something going on, you got to let me know, because I'm no, clearly it was not. Weird. It was weird, and I was with Sean Perry, too, and was he was, it, he was, was it also gassing with it them? I don't know if he was. Uh -huh. Uh, not not with us at the play. But you know, know Sean, you know Sean Perry, he's gonna like he's gonna really dig and analyze the joint and be like, yo, man, they came over here and they were like listening to you and, and Yo, uh, they were like <laughs> they were like mad like angry was, at they you. Were, like, and checking stuff. you out. Yeah, it was like You didn't see the way he looked oh my at you. God, it was like I was like, what is Sean coming in the room? And then Sean's going to be like, no, I don't know. I forgot. I don't know what he's did. I think, did I say that? I don't Yo, remember him They doing wanted that. to, like, fight you. And so <laughs> Crooked, you just said yourself yeah. that I said you were dope. No, no. You were like, yo, you like you earned your spot. And I was like, yo, like, yo, good looking out. And actually, But you didn't understand the comment. No, I didn't. Know. I was like, oh, like, was he giving me props? Like, what did I do? And you said the way you did it was a little disrespectful, but you earned your spot. See, and I was like, damn. I, I wish like, I could remember this. Yeah. yeah. I remember because I was so shocked. I was like, I was like, oh man, scissor hands is giving me dap. And I was like, what? This is what, what did it I was do? dap because <laughs> my last memory of you in New York was you being dope. You were dope to me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think you was whack oh, no. by any, you know, and at all. And I but. did talk to Riz later and he was like, yeah, you know, Riz, like, you know, like, why he changed his name to Crooklyn? You're not from, is he from Brooklyn? 
<laughs> like, why he changed his name? I thought he, he was doing all right to Crooked. Why he had to change his name to Crooked? <laughs> so I was like, nah, I never changed my name, man. Like, that was a, obviously a print error. It was a print error. But they called you yeah. DJ Crooklyn. But I always felt like you, you like, low-key thought I was, like, you know, like the, the bratty, disrespectful kid. You know? Well, where are you from? I'm from Manhattan. You're from Manhattan? Yeah. Okay, so honestly, I didn't really know you until I saw yeah, you yeah, yeah. in the I, DJ community. I totally understand. To judge you. Dude, nobody knew me at one. Like nobody, like when I did that first night, they were like, yeah, "Who the fuck is this Asian kid?" It was just like a big surprise. Where was one again? And I felt like a lot of people were like, "It was on West. It was downtown, like uh, like uh, on the it's corner." It's where Hotel Gansevoort is now. Oh, really? Yeah. On yeah. Wa- what is that? Washington on Washington, right? No, no, no. It's no, not, no. It's not a meat packet. No? It's right near where um, where, where SDK, is. where PM was. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's right by um. It was where Hotel Gansevoort was. Third it street? was where? It was right there. It was no, where, where Hotel Gansevoort was. 13th? Really? Some shit like that. I can't even remember. I used to go there every week. I don't even know what street it's on. <laughs> That's some good-ass weed, bro. <laughs> nah, you know what it is? But I'm it was gonna... a bridge and tunnel party. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've never done a bridge and tunnel party. It was party. Sundays, though. So yeah. it did have industry in there, too. You so had industry, bridge, tunnel, bridge and, and tunnel. industry mix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. It was so much fun, that party. Yeah. And then, like, but I was used to doing, like, the PM, Unique and Kiki parties you know what I mean? Like I was doing like tropical Brazilian lobby. house. Didn't you play a lobby? I did for lobby. Them? Yeah, I, I did. did lobby too. I, I worked for Mark Burbaum for a while. Yeah, and then um, Kane and all that. Shit yeah, you're doing the then. bougie spots. The bougie spots. You yeah. bougie guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like when I did Bridge and Tunnel, it was a different. It was a different style. It was like a little more hip hop. A lot more, more hip hop. More Brooklyn. More yeah. Biggie. You need more Biggie for for Bridge and Tunnel. And then like harder house. Which, yeah, a mix like of a little harder shit, house and little little other shit, and you couldn't do as much like, <clears throat> like rock and shit or like weird shit like that. But um, yeah, I mean at that time I was like, damn man, I always felt like y'all like were like, damn that's like that's that like disrespectful kid or whatever. <laughs> Honestly, I'm the kind of guy that because I'm friends with finesse for very many long time, yeah. I could see that being true mm-hmm. only because. What the fuck? Finesse is DJ in here. Now he's not. Yeah. And these young dudes are cut. The same way you feel right now how you own Vegas, as someone rolled in and, you know, hugged you to mug you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Come in and they start taking your spots. Mm-hmm. You start getting. Now, for me personally, it didn't matter personally because I, I wasn't DJ in there anyway. Yeah. So I didn't really care. You know what I'm saying? But I am like with the homies. I'm yeah, very. looking out for your boy. I always look out for my homies. And I, you and know I what totally I'm understand. And I totally understand, and I and I think I spoke with Finesse later, but he told me, and he's 100%, like I said, Joey said, come by the party, check out the party. I checked out the party. The next week, he booked me. So when Finesse's eyes, when I came up to Finesse and I gave him dap when I saw him. It was shady. It looked wow. like, oh, yo, Crooked's here. And then the next week, oh, Crooked's book. Like, I came there, I spoke to the promoter. and I you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, So right, it right. seemed like I went yeah. there, and I was right. like, oh, shit, I could do this party. Let me speak to Joey. Yo, I'll do this for $250. <laughs> that's that's uh, happened to me before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, happened so. to me dozens of times. <laughs> <laughs> Through the 90s? Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? Uh, but Kids that w- pretended they was my friends yeah, yeah, coming yeah, in yeah. there. They're hanging out with you in a booth. Man. Like, then the next week, they DJ. <laughs> around there is cool. Yeah. I'm saying, if you came up in them 90s, man, kids were starving. Yeah, they would come shit, up. Man. They'd yeah. come roll up. They'd carry your crates in and then talk to the promoter while yeah, you're playing the set. Yeah, trying to get shit. It was, set. Wait, yeah. was it that rough in the 90s? It was rough. It was just, everybody's trying to get on, It was man. semi-respectful in the but, 2000s. Yeah. No, Am it I was wrong? kind of respectful in the 90s. I came up like in the late 90s. I came up in the mid and late 90s also. It wasn't that I, so bad. I was doing like Ohm. Remember Ohm? 22nd Street. South yeah, Factory, I've, done, I've done Ohm. Yeah. South Factory Bar was, and those places. I have like a it question. It used to be called Cheetah. Mm-hmm. What was Ohm after Ohm closed? No, after it closed, oh. what it became? Nothing. No, it was something else. Yeah, it was one Dance. More. I want to say it was Dance Satiri or Dance yeah. something. No, no, shit. No, not Dance Satiri. Not that, but it was some shit. You, you, you already know my memory sucks. That was yeah, like the best thing. I love that whole area. I'm going to text Paul Drohan. Wait, wait. Ohm was... Was the old cheetah? No, 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 no. no, no. Che- Ohm, if you, right next to Ohm was a parking lot. If you walk through that parking lot now, you're on, the, you're a cheetah Cheetah's right there. Right there. Mm-hmm. And then you walk down and you yeah. had Central Fly right down the block. Okay, and I think, and I think Puppy's Central Restaurant was there too. Yeah. Was Justin's was there, right? right? Yeah, I love yeah. that place, dude. Central Fly, oh, so good. Was probably one of like the first club I've been to in New York besides Spa, I where I was it. like, hold, I want to DJ here. Oh, it's so good. It was and so and much then Mark Ronson was doing downstairs, I think. Yeah. It was like awesome. Mark and all the like. The oh, cool it's such a good club, man! It wasn't too big. You don't get lost in it, and it's and just then, a dude, great you vibe. could you could literally go from like 
Mark Ronson at Central Fly, and then go to Cheetah with Funk Flex. Yeah. yeah. And it was just, and you go yeah. one hood party and then you could go to like like the kind of bougie spot. Did yeah. you go to the tunnel on Sunday? I never been to the tunnel in my, my life. My man Really? I went never. once. No I was the resident DJ on Friday no in the tunnel in the wow. basement for yeah. four years playing hip hop when they were doing like Gonzo and the whole techno Charlie Casanova era was flying through there. But uh I went to tunnel on Sunday. Whew, that was a crazy like a picture the Toughest, what room, were you, what room were you in? The main room or where when I DJ, so I DJ rooms. downstairs in, in the, the library, li yeah. the library, yeah. And then that's where my residency was in the basement. But so, wait, 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 I want that's pre 2000. Yeah, but like, paint the picture for me because okay, I've never go been ahead. to the tunnel. Okay, so you pull up, you know, how many crates you got? Me, never, yeah, I said the same, I couldn't believe it. I, I had about seven. But seven then, crates. Yeah, seven crates. What I would do is... And I, how many homies you brought with you to bring I would go shit. with no homies and just pick dudes off the line. Yo, you look strong. Want to get in free? <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Hit, hit each one off with a drink ticket. Bow. Yeah. The only problem I had was getting home. At the end of the night, the There's whole place cleared out. So now I'm hitting bounces off of $50 bills. Instead, it wasn't quite the same. Right. You know? <laughs> but uh, I couldn't do it. Like, I seen Riz at exit, like... Three floors up, get left at the end of the night. And I'm standing there. I'm the only one with him. I'm like, should I fucking leave right now? Should I bounce? I'm not trying to carry his shit. It's mad. Man. Yo, he used to come out with crates like this. So, yeah, I would pull people off the line. Bro. So you pull the people off the line. You walk in. The coat check's right here to the yeah, right. Yeah. You hit, hit the coat check off. Then you go through the doors. And there are stairs that go straight down. As soon as you walk through the doors, that will take you into the library. That's where I was playing. That's where the hip hop was going on so you did the whole night beginning to end? It, I, I would put my own opener in and everything it okay was, i was working with uh i was taking the kid in jersey dj ap for a little while so then what, what time did it open what time did it open what was 10 o'clock 10 o'clock it was 10 to 4 10 was, to 4 so the, I opener had the whole did, damn night so, so, <laughs> oh so did you have an opener or you didn't i would did. bring my own opener yeah ap yeah. would uh, he, yeah he, ap he, would come yeah. in i would take up i would take my money and i would give him a piece of the money so 10 to 12 he would do he would do like it depends on on if the. If it mood. was cracking, you want to get on early? Or? I would not. Nah, most of the time, I would get on later because I was shit faced and I didn't. <laughs> see I was already talking. I was already in the dance floor <laughs> while he was playing the reggae. I'm out there trying to get some pussy. So no, <laughs> yeah. I mean. So then, and then you would, and then you would spin and get on, and then you would close the night out. I would cl pretty much mostly every time because once I get in my zone, I don't want to get off. And was it so. lights off at like four? Four o'clock. Lights the, up. I mean. The club was still open, right? The main room, the upstairs. Not always. No, it wasn't. Didn't really start hitting that after hours shit till later. But okay. like Peter Gation was like going through worlds of shit at the time. He owned right, that. Right, right, he yeah. owned that. He owned Palladium. You owned Limelight. Like, 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 everything, like, every, everything, anything epic in New York. You pretty, pretty much, much yeah. early epic. Yeah, early epic. then there was David Marvisi who earned the mid, who owned the Midway yeah. epic clubs like uh, Exit and right. and a couple of other spots that I can't really remember off the top of yeah, my head like, right now. When I started spinning in New York, I knew none of this history, and Sean Perry used to like. Like literally school me with all of this shit, and he just keep talking about Pia Gation. I'm like, yo, I don't know who the fuck that is, and all oh, the I don't stories know what you're and the about. politics. Yeah, yeah. Patch, Patch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He actually dragged me to that uh, that movie, that documentary. Oh, you Peter saw Gation. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's yeah, great. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I loved it. And I was like, oh shit, that's him. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. So then, what was the vibe like? Was it low ceilings in the library? Like, what what was it like? Low, what was it? Dirty, sweaty, dirty, nasty, sweaty. Everything you have seen like in your head as an old school hip hop party. Yeah, yeah. Like put let let me put it to you like this. Beach Street. You seen the movie Beach Street? Yeah. Okay. Remember the house party? Check one, two. It's working. Yeah, yeah. When he's throwing that house party, that's what the tunnel looked like in the basement. Same exact vibe. Just people just dressed weird and fat chicks so mixed good. with hot people. and Nobody gave a fuck what you looked like. You were just yeah. in the tunnel if you paid the $20. 15 with a reduced ticket. <laughs> And they, <laughs> you remember the reduce, free if he carried his records. Remember the reduced tickets okay. they used to give them out. Like they were like they looked like legit movie passes or something. You know? Yeah, they were just regular. They so took it real serious. 50, 50, 50. Was it a, was it different music from the main room? It was Black Moon and Smith and Wesson. It was, under, it was like backpack more, mix. More, not only, not but only. see that's what hip hop was then. You had commercial hip hop, but a lot of hip hop was still in the Nas and you know AZ right, right. and you know it was it was hood still. Primo was the, the rock star back right, then. Right, right. Yeah. Everything he made got played. Superstar would hit it twice, three times sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? Group home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I was um, I was a primo head, and we used to get that room jumping. Wow. And then you know, Jingle and Baby and records like that were, were commercial, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you know, it was like a mix of both, mm-hmm. but m- mainly, mostly the whole night was how hip-hop. long? Was, how many years did you do it? Four. Four years. I was a resident for four years under uh, Rob Rivera. He was the guy who ran the show. Oh, I haven't heard that name in years. Remember Rob Rivera uh-huh. and yeah. Gigi Rivera's sister? I'm, I'm friendly yeah. with them. I still yeah. kick it with them. Once oh yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. So wait. peoples. In the yeah. in the four years that it went on, d- did it change at all? Was it the same? What was the peak See, of it? That's a crazy question. Yeah. Because in the four years, it was exactly the same. The whole vibe never changed in the whole club, upstairs and down. It wasn't until like early 2000 when shit just started getting different. The techno music was phasing away and all the kinds of house music was coming in. And, mm-hmm. you know, like really the main floor kind of dictated what went on in the club. So if it was a house night, you would get like a housey crowd and then housey people that like hip hop would be in the hip hop room. Mm -hmm. You would get also a hip hop crowd going there, but like the main floor DJ was generally the dictator of what was going on. Okay, so on your night, it wasn't hip hop in the main room. Oh no. Oh, it was house. It was was techno. Oh, it was was techno. It was early techno, like, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, repeat. Well, repeat. He was playing. Yeah, like, like, like repeat. Disco, yeah. And um, who's what's his name? Steven Zor used to be Steven like a resident Zor, DJ yeah, yeah. there, and oh, Gonzo. Yeah. You know, I don't know if y'all know Gonzo, but nah. well, he was this the skater Gonzo, late ninety six, late ninety seven. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, wow. it's Gonzo. All these guys. Then Flex came on the Sunday and just Mecca. Oh yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. It was somewhere else though. First, right with Jessica. I don't know. Yeah, it was. Was, was it? Yeah. Where well, was, was it before that? That's a rough question, right? Uh, <laughs> wouldn't have been at uh, Red Zone. No, no, no. no it was, it wasn't. Sure. It wasn't at a club. Thing. It was at a. Um, it was at a cafe or a restaurant. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Jamie's like just listening to a bunch of old motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm you all in. How old like, are you, Jamie? Twenty nine. My man. I was born in '89. You hang with the yeah. right people, though. These Not guys, yet. they'll put you to school. He's yeah. a he's a Cali head, though. He's LA. He's yeah. LA. So he's so he'll put y'all to school too. <laughs> some Cali stuff. When it comes to gang culture, we got this. <laughs> so then, so then, after the four years, what what happened? Did tunnel just close or did, no, no? No, tunnel never closed. I just closed pretty what? much. What? I was done with that gig. It was gone. It was over. You know, and um. I was just moving around all the clubs like everybody did, else. Didn't you used to play Limelight though too? Played like Limelight, like yeah, I played the hip hop back, back room, room. Limelight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played. Uh, did you do? Ohm? I did Ohm. I was a resident at Ohm. Yeah, for I had a show pro- over two years. Ohm, I was Ohm was a amazing. Run there. Did you do Home Base? No, no. I, that's before my time. Okay. Home Base was the five floor spot, right? Uh, or, on the west oh, no, side. Riz, Riz on did the Home West Base, Side right? Highway. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. Flex Riz. Yeah, I I had gone, but I I wasn't. I wasn't Riz there. At the time. Riz didn't put me in position yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, my whole career is because of him. Mm-hmm. Like I was a producer. I wasn't a DJ. Yet. Well, let, let's talk about. This. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, you, let's, you drag let's, me let's, there. Let's, 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 go, back. Take, let's, let's go, go back. Let's go back. Back. Yeah. Back, back. All right. Okay. <laughs> to the beginning when you guys were like I don't know like running around. No, when you first met. Like how yeah. you guys hook up? Well, I started D. I started like I got my first set of DJ equipment. But y'all grew up in the same neighborhood. Yeah, or something? yeah. He lived. Eight blocks away from me. So you guys were friends, family friends? No. Or what was it? Nah, we weren't friends because he's four years older than me. Okay. I just exploited him. Sorry about that, Riz. <laughs> so, yes, I'm 25. He's 29. <laughs> <laughs> me and sister has the same age now. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, yeah. So um, I lived in the hood with him, but he was like, like, he's white, okay? But you couldn't tell if you heard him speak. The only way you could tell Riz was white is if you looked at him. Because he was, he didn't even date white girls. He was like very into hip hop culture mm-hmm. at the very, very, very start of it all. Like pre video music box. He, What's Kano- But what is Canarsie Brooklyn? Is Ka- that like, what is it like? Canarsie, the best word for it is hood. It's hood. Right now it's extremely hood. And before it was 50 uh, 50. I thought it was like a lot of Puerto Ricans. Italians there, right? on one side, Puerto Rican and black on the other. Okay. And I, and it's me and Riz live right in the middle. And it was all lovable. Everyone got along. Nobody really. I mean, you know, racism has existed long before. Yeah, yeah. All mm-hmm. of us. So. But it wasn't like some Benson Hurst shit. It was like more no, like no. Everyone it was together. Right. It got like Benson Hurst. It did. And that's how Canarsie flipped. That's another story. But Sharpton came walking through the neighborhood and the old school Italians were throwing watermelons at him off the roofs oh, shit. of the houses and wow. then the neighborhood flipped. And honestly, 
What do you me, mean? What do you mean by the neighborhood flip? It went all black. Oh. All black people decided we're taking this neighborhood over and white people can't live here no more. Were they, get, were, were they, were they getting kicked out of another neighborhood? Nah, nah. There? Nobody got kicked out of anywhere. Somebody, what happened was a black family tried to move. <laughs> a black family tried to move in into, on a block where these crazy white people didn't want them in there. Uh. So they blew the real estate office up. It was a log cabin. The logs was everywhere. They blew the whole shit up. They blew it up, exploded it, and Al Sharpton snapped the fuck out. So he came through and he handled his business. They blew up? Blew the whole thing up. Exploded it. Holy shit. Blew it up. And the dude that did it went to jail. So he went away and the whole place, you know, Al Sharpton walked through and racism was starting to really come to life. And Mm -hmm. my mother picked us up and got us out of there. So Out of Canarsie? Yeah. We went to Mill Basin for a little while. After, when it started getting rowdy, rowdy, and then to Bensonhurst and to Long Island. But anyway, back to the DJing part. I know, <laughs> the, you know I, I, we turned the shit into a whole political conversation. No, no, no. I, 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 was, here, I was sharp, though. I was like, oh, shit. Yo, There's yo, your background on Canarsie. No, I, never, I never went to Brooklyn. <laughs> I never went to Brooklyn. I'll tell you this right Canarsie, now. I just like saying Canarsie, though. That That's sounds cool. good. That's yeah, sounds I've cool. never like, been to Canarsie. Especially, Brooklyn. you don't have a Korean accent either, so no. it comes out perfect. No, well, just like I said. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. When you mentioned about Riz having that problem, like un- unless you saw Riz, you would never know that he was white. Crooked's been having that problem for a while. Crooked would show uh, up the gigs. They're like, Where, "Where's Crooked? What are you carrying?" Uh, Crooked's like, "Yo, what's up?" <laughs> could no, you, like, right? Doesn't that Crooked, you sometimes? sound pretty good. Canarsie, yeah. Canarsie could have been like in a song. Yeah. It's in many yeah. songs. Well, it was yeah. a good, good fellas too. The Canarsie yeah, hits. Yeah, the yeah, first part of me, it should have been in a chorus. Like yeah. I met this chick from Canarsie. You know, first club I DJ was in Canarsie, and it, it's in Goodfellas the movie. So, oh shit, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking dope. Amazing. Okay, so you guys were running around open, opening like water hydrants, like, and then <laughs> summertime. You know, we did with stick ball and the <laughs> stick ball. I'm sure he did the stick ball. Handball. Just a little smoothie. Ring a leave. Just a quart of waters. Quart of waters. Quart of waters. Lemon heads, fucking uh, Alexander the Great. Playing, playing Skelzy. Yep, so you, Skelly all day. So you guys started a doo-wop group, you and Riz. Nah. Uh, <laughs> you got jokes. I like you. I like you. Uh, nah, nah. We, he was very, he just picked it up early and became that guy. He was into scratching. He was in the DMC in like but how, did y- how did y'all meet? Oh, so just through the neighborhood. I was a producer, and I, I hung out with the younger kids of the older kids that he hung out with so you were making beats i got an asr 10 mm. and i started killing it mm. and and he was made he made a party break with scribble right uh under brooklyn slumlords what, or whatever you remember oh, what wow. year this yeah. was wow. uh, I don't even well, know that this. was like 92 i met riz before that though so if you what do you want to know how we started dj and producing together or how we met well how'd you I'm, start producing i just i just it was natural for was me. I wanted to make music. Who, who was the producer? You were like, yo, that's the shit. I want to sound like Mantronics, him. really, for me. Wow. It was it was Mantronics for me. It was, you know, Howie T. It was uh Damn, man, it was yeah. the Aleems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was and I'm a disco head too. I'm Eddie will tell you. Eddie plays records, I scream out the names of them when he does his <laughs> when he does his yeah, vinyl. That's why he's one of my favorites, because he, he don't give a fuck. He'll walk in a room and just play what he feels like playing. And most of the time he's playing what I feel like hearing. Did so. you did you play any <laughs> instruments as a hand? The skin flute. Just yeah, kidding. No, I didn't do that. I just, you know what I did? I stopped crooked. I stopped crooked from saying that. I, 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 I had the S out of my... I was like, you couldn't... I know one of y'all was ready to hit me with that. So I just got to get it out of the way real quick. But Amazing. Nah, no instruments. No drums, no keys. No dr- keys. But not. I didn't play keys. I played samples. So for me, it was speed the record up as fast as I could to get as much of the record in. Every record we made was on an ASR 10 until... Be faithful, pretty much. Every record was on a fully blown 32 gig ASR 10 mm-hmm. with an output expander, going into eight channels of a, a bullshit Mackie mixing board. But we made it work. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I mean, if you listen to the sound quality of our records now, in comparison to the way they sounded back then, it's like night and day. And all records yeah. in general, you know, it's so much more brilliant. I mean, we were dealing with 32 bit or whatever, but right, right. Yeah. in any case, we got the job done and it came out good. And it, it was um, so. Wait, wait, wait. So you were making beats, 
And then Riz was DJing, and you just heard through the like through just the neighborhood, like oh shit, we should link up. We or? knew each other through the uh -huh. neighborhood. like you know, I would our friends would be around his friends once in a while, and then I would see him or whatever. Yeah. So my next door neighbor actually is old, was older but than me. I just want to know if y'all like instantly got along, or we, did you, was there like weird shit? Let me explain to you. Yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> Riz is Yin, I'm Yang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you see already, but now now I'm kind of much pretty much the same like him. You know, well, I would know. Yeah, no. I just don't. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> not, <laughs> not exactly, but I just don't give a fuck about anything. So yeah. that's pretty much how he's always been, you mm -hmm. know? Like, whatever. So it's, I'm just curious, just like, whatever. how y'all decide to, like, yo, let's get together and do music? I produced. He was a DJ. He had sick ideas. Mm -hmm. So he came to me. Yeah. And I used the machine. And he was telling me, let's do this, do that, do that. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. That'll work. That'll work. And that was the relationship. We built it from there. He didn't produce. I produced. He had a lot of ideas, had ideas and all the connections. Okay. So everything happened because of him. Pretty much him knowing the right people mm -hmm. to talk to. You know. So what I'm Riz, saying? Riz as a DJ was already known on the block. Like yo. Well, Flex was embracing him right, bef right. before Flip Squad. Even he just knew. You know, like they. Riz was good. There's no taking right, it away yeah, from him. He yeah. was, he's still amazing, but he was amazing in the, in the late 80s. Like, he just scratched and did things that, that other kids weren't doing, you know? He was amazing, man. He I was, think he's one of the most instrumental pieces DJs of, of history. who shaped the nightclub sound of New York. A little, like, the, the quick mixing... I'm glad you feel that out. way. No, what about yeah, the open definitely. format? Let me explain. Yeah, yeah, open Let format. me explain yeah, to you. Yeah. We did open format stacking vinyl like this no. so that we could grab one at a time. Mm -hmm. I used to stand there when he was doing a set and Damn. pass him one after the next, and he would throw the vinyls back quick and just do all disco, freestyle, mixing house, rock, 80s. He was doing that like you know in what? the Ronson days. The, bro. Uh -huh. the first time I heard um, Riz was on Hot 97, he was a, a guest DJ, mm -hmm. and he was like quick bits in and it was so quick. It yeah. felt like it was like edited beforehand, but it was live. A lot of people were questioning until they see it. And that's how fast he was. Amazing, wow. bro. Yeah, this is like amazing. before Serato. This is vinyl. Right. But, but, but crazy. needle dropping, but making it sound like spot. it's one yeah. song. It like crazy. Like, one... like Latin Rascals, like take yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. exactly. Yeah. Perfect. But And that's the difference when you hear some dudes quick mixing now where the songs don't blend together, they don't match together, and it doesn't right. seem like... It like doesn't tell entity. a story. Doesn't yeah, tell it doesn't a story. seem like two entities becoming one. Right. Or like mm -hmm. you, know, you do like a and quick it's mix. It's a lot of, easier you know? now. Right. <laughs> it's oh, like, yeah, he yeah, always made it work. Easier. He always yeah. made it work. It to, makes sense. Yeah, dude, yeah. it was crazy back then. Yeah, yeah. So, so much to, easier now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so then, <laughs> so then, what was the fr so like? Scri I don't even know this. So, Scribble and Riz had a, this breakbeat, right? Scribble and Riz and somebody, and I, I think Slinky might have did that with them too, but. uh Shout out to Scribble. Scribble is yeah. an instrumental piece of my history because he put us in, you know, he put us in a couple of different positions. One being the radio, him and Chris Moody helped us get on the air. Two with the party breaks and, you know, just mm -hmm. creating it. Our first record came out on Nervous back in 93, I think it was, or 94. And it was um, Brooklyn Slumlords presents the Crooklyn Clan. Wow. Party on the dance floor? No, that was the first one on the 88. It was right before that. I can't even remember the record. That's how long ago it was. Me and Never would, were, were trying to remember what was the first party break. I was thinking the same. I was wondering. Newbie and Crackers, I think. Oh, really? One for the one one. What was it? That's right. Yeah, you're right. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was Newbie and Crackers. What was it called? One for Manny no. Napori and those guys. They were good. Man. Was that before um, Zulu, Zulu Chant? Zulu Chant? Zulu Chant was 92, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. New Big Crackers is 90... 91? Or 92? Was it? Mm, I don't know. Man, you're making me pick my phone up. <laughs> I don't know. I wish you guys wrote this down. But it was pretty close, though. It was definitely around the same time. Nubian Crackers came dumb early. Yeah. So, that was I don't what remember. Head, what was head, that? Headcracker, right? Or, or, no, no. What was it? What, one, did was it have it? the Cuddy Ranks sample? Yeah, yeah. yeah one of them did. So the, but that, that, that was not the first one. But you know what? Yeah. No. Nah, you know what? Wasn't... Um, what was the Kenny first? Dope, the first one? Super? Oh, that Super Super, Super was... Yeah. yeah. And that, he also I don't know if it was that, first though. That was in like ninety five. Well, well also that was in ninety one. There was also it came out around the same time as Brand Nubian, one for all. Because it took that sample. Right. Uh, doom, head doom, crack, head doom, crack. Doom, doom, doom. Doom. But then, but wait, yeah, but Kenny cat. Dope also did the Blood Vibes. Yeah, that was like ninety one. Wasn't Blood Vibes before was Blood Vibes before um 
Uh, nah, super. I got you both with uh, with Junior Reed. I got the it. One blood. I got it. What's up, Todd Terry? Royal House. Okay. He's got a no, no. okay. Which one? The OG Royal House album. Which kind? Yeah, it's called This Is a Journey. That's the first party break, I think. Wow, man! Really? Now listen, try. I know you ain't gonna remember that <laughs> no, right I now. Remember, no, I remember that album. I know it had a lot of break beats and, on it. Yeah, there was like, two. The, there was two little hip hop type ones. Okay. One was called yeah, This Is I a did. Journey, and it had Bing Dong Dong. Okay. The thing that the thing that the uh, the Isley uh set not was uh, it the uh, Ike Mood Ike Mood right right Ike Mood uh, right Isaac so, Hayes. right it had yeah. the Isaac Hayes. I remember shit. that one. Yeah, that that's a break beat. So okay, so if you gonna say that then i guess the first <laughs> the first break beat was the first no party beat, break party break yeah. was the 900 number wow that came after no that came out in 88 that came after the royal house album we gotta yeah. we gotta check the royal, house, came, the, the royal house album came out in late 88 45 k 900 number came out in this is the like summer a, of like 88 a history lesson for you me got right now you got months I got I got seasons. So you know something? I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put my phone down. I got seasons. Why do you guys do that? Was it uh, the Royal House album? Can you party? Is that it? it, 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 it yeah, yeah, that looks like it. 1988, right? Yeah, 88. I'm gonna go in discharge. That came out like in the, the fall of 88. Are we taking a? Well, a, a 900 number is clearly a break. Spring, break. spring, spring of 88. All right, well, if this is it. Number. So, Sis, you're talking about this yellow album with Can You Party, A Better Way, The Journey, No Way, No Way. The Journey, The yeah. Journey. The yeah, jo okay, so it. this was uh, 1988. Yeah. Okay, so can you look up And now I'm going to look at 900, 900 number. number. Yeah. 900 number. Uh, this is okay. so great, by the way. <laughs> I thought 900 number was 90, bro. Okay. 91. 90. Yeah, 90. 90, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Nev. <Yeah. Ned. laughs> that's, I mean, I'm the 900 I'm, number was 90? 90. I thought it was 88. I, that's just what I, I knew saying, it was huh? the 90s joint. Yeah. 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 But yeah. you know what? Look up Get Up uh, by Kenny Dope. When did that come Get out? Get Up, clap your hands. Yeah, hand that hand. is a dope. That's, that's, oh, yeah. so that's my favorite part. That's my favorite party. I With the like, funky sensation. I still yeah. play oh, that. So that good. had to be after Zulu Chant. That was after. I think that yeah. was after Zulu Chant. It had to be. Because when I. I the first time I heard Zulu chant was on like 107, like WBLS, 107.5. Oh, 107. So I'm still yeah. trying to find yeah. that, that and original. I was, that and they I got. was just like, yo, what the fuck is this? Well, and I remember going one. to Rock and Soul and <laughs> singing it for them. You couldn't yeah. find it? I, I didn't know what it was. And I was like, it goes doo doo doo, call five. <laughs> I, like, I, didn't, I just <laughs> told them. Zulu, 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 good stop. Yeah. Yeah. 900. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Right. I thought it was Give this. Give it the 900 number. The 900 number EP came out in 87. Oh, Thank you, shit. Hold on. E e e yeah. e I know that was 88, man. A oh, tough city. Tough city, 1987. That was 80. <laughs> I'm not, look, take it easy, Jamie. Because I, I had a blue, blue label, 19, 1990 blue label. Just B 12 inch. was 80 something. Because that came out around the same time as Latifah album came out. And the 900 number was 87. So the first party break is 900 I can't number. believe 900 number. I'm telling you. Because Red Alert was playing that. That was like the background music went on during his commercial. Yeah, that was his That was his anthem. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And he had a yeah. dance to the Red Alert. I would say 88. Nine, all right, let's fucking do it. Let's fucking settle this. It's a blue, it's a blue tough city, man. Somebody call 45 King. Somebody call Margaret. Somebody call <laughs> You know what? Because I have the 12-inch at home. Paul, Me too. See now, all right. <laughs> now Why would you leave the twelve inch at home? Oh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this one's showing eighty nine on the blue tough tough that, city. See, that's the one that I got right. Yeah, there. I got that one also. So this is showing eighty nine. So all right. Who the so, fuck knows, the, man? so did the break come out on that nine hundred number? He's looking at. Can I see EP? that album you're looking at, please? Because I don't even remember there being the album until the single came. Then the album came after. There was a couple of EPs from Tough City it, from. From from, 45 from him, yeah. yeah. He's got yeah. a whole bunch, exactly. whole bunch yeah. of joints. Yeah. I have a lot of his breaks, right. not one compared to that one. Oh, no, of course not, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think mine's a reissue. I don't have the the original pressing on it. I Hold on, I just found a list of the greatest uh, 100 beats of, like 100 songs of hip-hop. And 40, yeah. Right 45, 900 number. In the mic. 900 number is, yeah, 1987. Thank you. Damn. EP. Shit, thank you. I mean, <laughs> on this card, they got one 1987 there? Yeah, the, 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 this original one. This was the oldest one. Yeah, this is the oldest one. Well, this is the This is the cover for it. Beats the shit out of me. Yeah, I'm confused. 
I know yeah. that one right there. That's Which the is, first one I got you know, off the wall in the record store. That's the EP store. right there, though. Yeah, the EP showing up is 92 on Discogs for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. There were probably so many runs of that record, though, that it, you, you, it was like Clear My Throat. All right, guys. Yeah, Clear My Throat was 2006, right? 2004? <laughs> Yo, that wasn't <laughs> 2000, man. <laughs> so many times. All right, All right. so... <laughs> that was a battle <laughs> of the OGs. I wasn't that. Hey, Nev, no but respect. No, <laughs> same here. Same here. Just trying to figure it out. I love it. I love it. Same here, man. <laughs> Everyone, let's get out of the pool. All right. <laughs> let's get about the first. Get out of the pool. Down. Forget about the first party break. Now let's get back to um, Viz and Sis. Yeah, yeah. So wait, wait. What was? Yeah. So wait. We were talking about the first party breaks and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. What was your first? The ones that you. The first one that you and Riz. Well, the first one that really made noise was not the one on Nervous, but I can't remember the name. Of Co the coffee one Breaks. On. Electric Relaxation was in the one that we used on The first one. On Nervous. The, oh, okay. That was I'm the Brooklyn sure. Slum New Edge present, right, presents, Brooklyn Plan. I looked that up, too, because that's my own record. I don't remember was what Was Nervous used. just putting out a bunch of party breaks? Nervous was dipping into it. Because yeah, the Flex, I, the the flex the, one. The Six yeah. Million Ways to Die. Yeah. Was yeah. That was, that was Butterfly dope. style. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Butterfly style. Mm -hmm. Six Million Ways yeah. to Die. Those are dope. Butterfly style. It had the, it's yours, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, the biggest one, the, fir the first one that got noticed was the New York Anthem. So that was, that was the bomb. Was that the first that was the, that was the Coffee Breaks. That was, uh, yeah, EP. Coffee Breaks. And, and NYC Anthem. Two songs on that. Two songs blew us up on that. Oof. One in New York City because the Knicks took it and started using it. And then on the flip side... Was the Knicks started using absolutely it? Absolutely. For years, they licensed okay. it from us. Wow. And, then the, and then on the flip side, Party on the Dance Floor blew the fuck up in the UK. So How did had, that go? Party on the yeah, dance floor, party people want more, party on the... It had... Oh, yeah. Fast car? Oh, yeah, yeah, it had the fast uh, car okay, loop. Yeah. Sometimes I'm oh, slow. Yeah, 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 sometimes yeah. I'm running slow. Uh, loop, whatever. Okay, yeah. And it, it had a lot of breakbeat pieces mm -hmm. in it. It was like a, we just sat there for hours going ham and, you know, made something that really catered to okay, the okay, okay. Europeans. So. so, I'm very curious about this because the way it was back then, to me, it would have taken a, a shit ton of work. Uh, a shit, shit ton of work but <laughs> you like how, what was the average on how many tracks that you use and did you do that on an asr or you had to record that right so what we would do is before we would i mean right away we pretty much upgraded the asr when you were able to yeah and you got like 200 mm -hmm. something seconds so we didn't have to do it ghetto style anymore but what we were doing was putting the, the record on the 1200 and spinning the fucking platter like this and while it was going one speed recording it it would be a close enough where we would get all that then slow it down on the keyboard and oh, have wow. all that shit, man. a whole fucking sample of shit to use so damn man People trickery never, baby are you trickery. serious Kids what do you never think Pete Rock did man how do you think wow. Pete Rock got all those samples in the damn SP12 that should have a nine second sample time bro. holy oh, shit. shit nine I never, seconds I never he made knew that. he made every sales smooth record on that thing so, so. y'all sped it up that fast and then slowed it down yeah, because when you speed up that fast, if you're taking a piece this big, chances are that piece is going to be going the same speed. Mm -hmm. So when you catch it, it'll be good enough, you know? Yeah. And if you have to, you, you make a copy on the next key, chop the next piece, and slow it down so just a little, little bit. Little right. Far, speed it was you a, want it. tons of wow, work. Man. It was so My much work, God. man. It was so much work. Damn. That's crazy. Would you leave it at the zero mark, or would you just like, like plus eight? We mean? Like... On the turntable, you say you sped it up, right? No, he did it by hand. Oh, by hand. Yeah. I did it by hand. Oh, yeah. Shit. We would we would turn it, you know, to put it in neutral, okay. and then just rip it real fast okay. so that we can get as much sample time. The needle would be like That's going insane. across. So, so in in the in the in the SP twelve hundreds and all of these insane. samplers, yeah. there was a limited amount of sample time that you could have. Yes. And there was a it was a bank, so if you wanted multiple samples, you know, when you recorded them, it had to be like. One and a half second. You would have to have you enough room. Yeah, so, so, but you though. needed everything. You needed drums. You needed snares needed and everything. Sam for us, it was all samples. So yeah. we would mm -hmm. have just sample of this, sample of that, and the more samples you could fit, the better the track. So comes if, out. If, if you exactly. if you recorded in real time at like hundreds of like you know hundreds of a second instead of a second and and a half, yeah, you had more room to put other samples in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you could slow it down once you once you had it recorded in in that in that fast real time. God damn. Um, but yeah, I mean that that was before it was like unlimited. Now, where now it's, it's like on the computer, so you're yeah. good. 
Like Even the, before the computer, when, you know, Akai was putting out some crazy samplers and it just got much easier over time. So then, wait, you would take, so you took that and then you, did you record it on like a reel to reel or did you, how did you? Nah, we, we bounced it from a cassette so tape? My, no way. Nah, my oh. studio consisted of an ASR 10, an output expander, a, a SEC mixing board from Europe. Okay, then I got the Mackie after, but I started mm -hmm. with the SEC, which is which is awesome. It had really cool mid sweeps on it, and I was making house music before I, I started dabbling with hip hop. So, and uh, a DAT machine. So the DAT oh, yeah, machine, that, yeah. the DAT machine was plugged in. We would get the track right, get it right, mixed on the board. Everything sounded. So you mastered engineering. I everything. did the whole shit myself. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Listen, ghetto style, baby. That's yeah. how you got to do it back it then. We, good. we didn't have a gazillion yeah. dollars to go to freaking yeah. uh, Frankfurt Wayne like, yeah. and get, uh, do all that shit. You know. So you got it on the DAT. Got on the DAT. Brought it to the label. Collected the check. Oh, wait, wait. So <laughs> yeah, man. When you so when you did that first one. Were you shopping? Riz had the connections, and he no, no, no. We already he already put the deal together mm. with this this guy Mark Petricone that owns Aviate Records. Okay, no, wait. I want to hear about the nervous deal first. The nervous deal was in and out. Scribble put it together. It for was us. a one time thing. We did one record, but we didn't. We wanted to go somewhere we can brand. So this is my question. Uh, you do a one time with with nervous, right? Uh, they record it. They sell. I don't know what was the what was the first what was the test pressing for them. Like you know what I mean? What do you mean? Like how many how many vinyl did they press? Oh, the first pressing. I don't know for nervous, but Aviator have those numbers. So like with nervous, you guys just got to check, and you if they repressed I, it four more times, you you wouldn't get paid, right? It was a, it yeah, was a, a typical record contract for back in the days was. How you doing? Go fuck yourself. Here's your advance. Take a hike. A one time deal. Never will tell time. you. Yeah. Never will tell you because he comes from my time more. It was terrible. Right. It was just brutal. So like you get it and then you just pray to God. If your shit winds up in a car commercial, you won't see no money for it because they stole your publishing. Mm -hmm. That's just how they did. But you know what? And sh and shout to Mike Weiss if he ever does hear this. He's the owner of Nervous. He's a cool guy, but he runs the business the way a business should be run. Right. That's just how the record industry worked. I mean, you can't fight it. So mm -hmm. we went somewhere and they doubled. The, the guy that Riz found us, this guy Mark Petricone, doubled our advance money. That we got, And that was AVA? From, yeah. This was the beginning of AV8. It was owned by Mark Petricone and uh, yeah. Armand Van Helden yeah. at the time. So, oh, shit. I didn't know Armand yeah. Van Helden AV was part of eight. Wow. Armand man. Van, and then they, I never oh, asked shit. him why. Wow. That's so, crazy. Yeah, Armand Van Helden owned it and, and Mark. But Armand was off. Off, hands off owner. Mm -hmm. He was just too big being God at the time. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, like he was starting to really, yeah. right after the Todd Terry era, the Armand era came. Oh my so, God. and he yeah. was bubbling king, hard. Yeah. So, but, um, so wait, wait. So, if you, don't mind me asking, advance, if you don't mind me asking, $2,500. And you split it. Me and Riz split it. So, twelve fifty each. For four cuts. Wait, uh, this is AV8 deal? AV8 deal. So, that means y'all got, uh, Twelve fifty. Twelve fifty before. Yeah, Six twenty-five. Twelve fifty each. Oh, oh yeah, before we got twelve fifty before. Yes, exactly. You got it. You right. got it. Six twenty-five. Wow. But only two cuts we made on that. Uh -huh. But for us, for me personally, my, moms was paying the bills. I was like, I want to be a rock star with these joints. Yeah, yeah. This shit is hot. It's ready for the clubs. People want it. I was already going so out the first like crazy. One, so, so the first one you released with Nervous, it was bubbling already. Nah. Nah? The first one we did with, with Nervous really didn't make no noise. No noise. Nah. It was just Aviate is where we, we really bared down. After Riz and I got in a studio for the Nervous track, he came over my house. We got adjusted. I started teaching him. They saw 10. Mm -hmm. And he started learning. He picks up everything mad quick. Right. So he started learning how to use it, and we got a comfortable workflow going. After that, it was like butter. We started knocking them out one a month. So then the first one on AV8 was? Was Coffee, Coffee Breaks. Breaks. And that's the one with one track getting licensed by the Knicks. The other one got us a shoot the pump deal in the UK. Fuck. So a lot, of, a lot of crazy shit, man. A lot of stuff happened over those. And then you got publishing from that. See, now... This goes into a couple of people I'm not allowed to really speak okay, about, okay. but Mark Petricone and our relationship with Mark Petricone was questionable, but it got more questionable as time went on. At the beginning, he was telling us that he was doing things that he's supposed to do mm -hmm. and that the contract said he was doing, but we were finding out that 
that other things were happening. But so with not officially, but because Riz yeah. knows mm-hmm. so many people, right. yeah. and he's so connected, he's like, did you know this is here, here, here? We yeah. started finding out about licensing deals and stuff like that. That, you know, but Mark seemed pretty straightforward. Of right, uh, right. yeah, he was like, yo, the Knicks just took this fucking song, and we all jumped around in the office in a circle. You know what I'm saying? It was, <laughs> it was crazy. It was like, yo, you know, this did, is a. They were. How, he, how much was the licensing at that time? We got like five G's for that. I mean, I wasn't mad. I was with 20-year-old boys, yeah, man. Yeah. I was like, fuck wow. yeah, baby. Was you got under contract with um, AV8? Yeah, nah, we had a, an individ- We were never under contract with AV8. Each release had its an individual okay, contract. Yeah. So every time we did something for him, it was a one-off. How long, mm-hmm. uh, how long did the Knicks uh, license a song for? Probably three. I think they still use it. I'm not even gonna wow. lie to you. <laughs> Shit. Not, but only during warm-ups. You know, boom, dun dun dun, dun yeah. over the over the oh, total so beat good. is yeah. New York. And I play I, it every night. Yeah, so, I, 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 it never leaves my record. You love that record. I love the, it. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you played oh, it before, oh, Nev. Man, you we played it right. Played it. We all so played it, man. Yeah. If y'all go to a Knicks game. You might hear it during the practice. And let us know. Tweet us and let us know if you ever hear it. No, I don't, I don't go to Nick games. The Knicks suck. <laughs> Take it easy. Sorry, bro. Take That's it all easy. Knicks fans. Where was, it, where was that sample from? Uh, was that a vocal? DJ Cole. Oh, okay. it, it was Total and DJ Cole. Yeah, 20-minute so, workout? Where'd you take it from? 20-minute workout. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we were just, and Cole was like, oh, my God, I love you guys. And we started working with him at, right after that. That's amazing. He fell in love with us. So... Don't you want to know about the second record? What was the second record? I want to know if you guys know the second record or not. What's the second record? So the second record was called D's, like D's Nuts, Are the Breaks. You recognize that? Shit. Nah. So... Bam! East Coast, West Coast, and Worldwide. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. East yeah, Coast, yeah, West yeah, Coast, yeah, and yeah, Worldwide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. East Coast. Remember that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, right. That was our second record. Flex absolutely yeah, went bananas for that Except record. Except with... Um, Lost Boys. Lost Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Lifestyle. Yeah. So Lifestyle's a little bit. He just jumped on that and just 15 times in a row. <laughs> oh, he jumped. Like, oh, it was yeah. even pre-bomb, I think. He was just uh, yeah, yeah. dropping. He's yeah. like, this is crazy. Are you ready for this? Oh, you know Flex. So he got into his Hulk Hogan mode, and he just went crazy. <laughs> Hulk Hogan <laughs> mode? And, my, and from that point, me and, Riz, me and Riz's money in New York went right up the ladder. Wow. We started getting better paychecks for DJing. You this know what was, I'm saying? This, this is before your, uh, your tunnel era? It was during it. Yeah, okay. It was during and, it. And I mean, what a, what a so, better promotion. I mean, Fletch was such a proponent of Flex the Brooklyn made us. project. Flex I mean, made us. He made us. And then when I would find those no records, question. I was like, oh, this is that shit. Yeah. Like the Franklins yeah. and all that. I was like, oh, I can't well, believe I have it. Would there be times that you would do an edit and then just take it to the tunnel and try it out? No. We didn't, there wasn't, we didn't have that kind of juice. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, we did, but like you, there was no way to really do that. You had to do that with a dad back then. Okay. So we would, you would catch Flex play dad. Yeah, but I'm, for, 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 to, and that's what I was kind of, I wanted to get into was that to do an actual vinyl pressing was a lot of work, wasn't it? I mean, well, the amount acetates, of money that huh? you had to put up, no? No so We didn't put up a penny. No, but I'm just the saying. The label, I think, so they were working with um, Specialty. At the at the time, because wait wait wait, how much was how much was a Crooklyn Clan AVA record like ten ninety nine? Three ninety nine. No, no. It was, yeah, it was four. Yeah, yeah it was, it was probably like four ninety nine. It was a regular was twelve it? inch. It yeah, 12 like inch. rock and soul, like four ninety nine, three ninety nine. Yeah. Pressing cost at five thousand yeah. units cost at eighty eight cents a piece with cover. Eighty eight cents with cover. Mm-hmm. Wow. Pressing costs and then AVA, you, and then they would sell it to uh, the record stores for. Yeah, they sold it to the record stores. I think Mark would sell it for like uh, two. Ninety nine, like three dollars, yeah. whatever it was. The record store made a buck to a buck and a half. Oh, he was just he was selling direct a to buck, the record store. Yeah, stores? yeah. He, well, oh, for a while, yeah, he yeah. had his own. You know, Universal started distributing his ass. Wow. Pretty, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But see, it got to a point where he was paying a quarter a record because when we made a record, forty thousand came out right away. He would press forty thousand records right away because he could How save that money. Take? How long did it take? Right away, it was right away. Whatever order you put in with the plant, they 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 ready to go. They they're ready to go. They get in there and they, they press them records. They know how to press 40,000 because LL was making records and people like that was making records that needed 40,000 pressings. We were making records every DJ bought. So right away, they will fly off the shelves. It was an automatic thing because if you saw like a new Crooklyn Clan or an AVA label, yeah. 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 That yeah. was great. Yeah. Was there like, it was amazing, it's man. funny now, was there like a resell? Market for their uh, no. for the vinyl, like if you buy five and then it just sells out, 
people will be selling in the street for like ten dollars instead. No, uh, you go no, on discogs, no. you could no, they weren't doing. You mean like how they no, how was, they'll buy all of one toy up if they know it's yeah, coming yeah. out on Christmas, and then yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, will try no. to hit you on the head. No, no, yeah, nah, okay. that thing no. because if it sold out, they would just repress it again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. it was okay. always available. The label was on it. Yeah. They, but he was not yeah. losing a penny. J- Jamie's a sneakerhead, so everything and is our, like sneakers with him. So I know. I see those are fresh. What size are you, bro? Twelve. Damn. I guess we ain't getting you in the park. <laughs> I can tell he's like a nine and a half. I'm, I'm a ten. But you guys, would you guys ever do acetates or no? Or was that just strictly with no, the house? No, I never seen. And, and honestly, and house and like. acetates got were made for every piece of vinyl that got made. Sure. But we never got them. The thing is, is the label didn't get the acetate all the time. The the presser plant always had an acetate of every vinyl that was ever pressed. Okay. Even till today, probably. What's a, what's an acetate? An acetate like a dub is plate. a glass like, vinyl. It's a dub plate. Lacquer. With the yeah. with the um, Jamaicans used to make back in Jamaica of their records, so like they wouldn't press because they couldn't afford to press, so they would just make the acetate. You play it a hundred times. And it's I'm about to say yeah. that you only can play it a few you times. You wear it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You wear it thin. Ten, so. ten inch lacquer acetate. They smell amazing. They smell, you, amazing, love, oh, they smell amazing. They smell so good. Just high five each other. <laughs> of course, Eddie would say that. <laughs> Yo, they do. If you're one they, of those people that go into sneaker the store, smell of an acetate is like, like, like a new car smell. You it's know amazing. I mean? It's amazing. The funny thing is that I can tell you the sneaker just by smelling it and blindfold. Come on. Yeah. Uh, nah, that's bullshit. No, don't take your shit out. All right, all right, bro. Come here. Yeah. No, how, how, do you do, be... how do you do it underwear? <laughs> Same brand. Like... It has to be brand I'll new. I'll take though. them off. You can smell them. No, there's a video of me. How do you do it nuts in your nose? <laughs> it's just so... that smell, so I can relate to what y'all talking about. I love, I love, I'm, I'm a smell person. I'll stand in a gas station just for no reason. <laughs> Okay, I'll do that. I'll just smell <laughs> fucking gas for 20 minutes, and I'm good. Baby. Really? Good. Yeah. All right. So what, what Jamie was saying, like, you know, now, like, DJs will make a record and then go DJ that night and be like, yo, this is my new joint. Like, yeah, how like, do y'all feel about it? Try out. But back then, it was like, you had to sit on it for a little bit until it got pressed. Well, right? yeah. th- labels were funny with it because once you start leaking shit and people start hearing it, there's a chance somebody else will get a recording of it. I'm telling you, he's been, he was around during the Killer Cuts era, so he'll tell you. Yeah. These motherfuckers will take... A recording off a of TV and put it on vinyl. Yeah. They didn't give a Shit. fuck. Oh, those you remember the first, shine, remember those, sh- first shine record? What you trying to speak for? Yeah. The recording was literally like it sounded there like was a, a bunch of records that. Oh my god, it was so bad. Oh, so the recording, but that yeah. record was so dope. I thought it was Biggie for the first like twenty times I heard it. <laughs> Damn. I couldn't believe it. And That's then crazy. it was just bad sound quality. Yeah. People don't care. They will steal your shit and put it out. There was so. a bunch of bootlegs. Like, Killer Cuts just had, like, a bunch of bootlegs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hot 97 you, you, you hits. You had some Killer Cuts oh. right now. Oh, oh, we, had, we had I, no I still, choice. I still have it, yeah. Yeah, we had no choice, yeah. man. We had to get it. They were those. great. Yeah, exactly. You had, had to, to get, get it, man. They served Absolutely. a very important purpose. So, Killer Cuts, yeah. if you've ever seen it, uh, Jamie or... or or, uh, I got D. a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I swear to God. Killer cuts might have like the new Foxy Brown. It might have like the new uh, Genuine. Like, like a new like, Biggie. Faith 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 Faith. I mean, yeah. these, I mean, these on one side. It'll be like three songs on one side, and oh, then no, the other ha- side. I have some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then so it would just be like, like an arrangement of bootlegs. Yeah, some yeah. might sound better than the others. Some might sound like there were so shit. many. They would get it any way they could and put it out. The debt ones. The it's a debt. That's where like the Benjamins came out. It was Benjamins, a song called Jewels. I think uh, Faith Evans. I just can't with the Buster Rhymes woo ha beat. But the but yeah. the Benjamins yeah. only had the locks that version. It didn't have yeah. Little Kim they, and it did, yeah. They have Puff. No, they have Biggie. Or, um, didn't have Biggie. Yeah, Biggie yeah. yeah. Right. that's the oh, just had the yeah. locks. That's was, the original. Right. It was yeah, like two yeah. minutes long. It was that was like the original. Yeah, I remember um, that. about the Benjamins. Yep. That's probably where we sampled it for for the Franklin for Franklin break. Yeah, wow. because we put it out. Dumb early. We saw Diddy in the club. I was like, oh, fuck, Riz. Diddy's but that was here. the second one. <laughs> I thought we was going to get beat up. You know what? Really? I have a question for you, sis. I, um, with the Franklins, you had the original beat was Hypnotized. hypnotized. No. The first Franklin's was made with the Benjamins. The, mm. the remix was made with the Hypnotized. Because oh. on the label, it says that the, um, the Biggie, It says original. original exactly. That's the, uh, here goes the secret for you. Uh-huh. I, that was my idea. I said, let's say original mix so that we can sell uh. a bunch more records uh, and, okay. and just tell people we originally did it over this uh, just so they'll just buy it up. And it and worked. There it it was. And, <laughs> and it worked. DJ <laughs> history, listen. <laughs> you got us. It's part of the scheme. It's called scumbaggery. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel fucking. In, I feel insulted, man. No. <laughs> man, if you asked, you would have got them free. You would just. You left. You said, "Fuck these New York kids. I'm out of here." Dude, man. <laughs> Yo, well, I'll talk about the Vegas thing later. And was there like a like a secret pocket you focused on, which was like the 90 BPM to the 100 for all your? You know breaks? what it is, Riz had an uncanny ability to know what was going to blow up. He just heard a song, and before Flex got it, we used to go, like, every Saturday, we would go, uh, like, Friday, rather, we would go into the city, sometimes Saturday, too, mm -hmm. and pick up vinyl from the labels, from everywhere, always free stacks of vinyl like this of all promos of what was, you know, new. Riz would listen to these records, and he would mark up records and say, this one is going to be a hit. Mm -hmm. And almost every time he was right. I could never understand because records I heard I thought were dope that didn't hit. And I'm like, but this is a dope record and it would do okay. But then he would be like, this is going to be a hit. And boom, it just fucking explodes. Like he had a good ear for it. Mm -hmm. So he would kind of pick the lead record. Like, what are we going to, what do we do next? Mm -hmm. You know, he picked Lifestyles. He picked the Benjamins. You know what I'm saying? So was the Benjamins the third or fourth one? Third. Uh, no, 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 no. Eargasms was third. Oh, wow. Eargasms. What was on the Eargasm? There was one that did... See, we also had the issue of... Because right away, we didn't just pop in New York. We popped in the UK. So we had to please these UK people also. Yeah. So we were making records for Flex and making records for the UK. When mm -hmm. you say making records for Flex, he will hit you up and like, yo. No, 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 no not till later. Fle okay. We did a couple of records with Flex. I did one with Armand Van Helden myself yeah. on, on Enter the Meat, on to Enter the Sample Slayer, his album from 2000. And uh, we did like two Flex albums. A lot of shit. There's a lot more to this story, man. I don't know yeah. how much time y'all got. I mean, shit. We, we here, we here. Yeah, man. so, but, um... All right, so what was I just saying? The third one was Airgasms. Yeah, Airgasms, and we probably, because I can't remember a single fucking song on it, we probably uh, aimed it at, uh, the, UK. at the UK. Because uh -huh. we were flying back and forth there. I filled three passports because of that era. So we, so you were like performing? We were DJing. In UK? Everywhere. Wow. We were DJing everywhere. Like the limelight in the UK, all these weird places. I was so young, I was scared to death, bro. I, we lived in Germany for a month and a half. Just for DJ gigs? Just because we had gigs on wow, um, tours that's, that's all crazy. around the place. So we were living in the Dortmund Hotel. And and then we would go, if the gig was too far away, to like these small hotels. Riz will tell you the scariest shit ever. We were in like a brothel, or whatever you call it. <laughs> a what do you call it? A Russell? A Russell? Who the fuck knows what they call it? And you walk through these hallways, and the hallway was this skinny. It was like... You walk through, and then at the end, there's a room with animal heads everywhere. Oh, yeah. Right Just in my alley. fucking animal heads everywhere with the eyes all looking at you like straight out of a horror movie. I swear to God. It sounds like oh, that man. movie Hostel. Yeah, no, no. I swear <laughs> to God, that is so real. And the beds were like this big. You sleeping on a toothpick. For real, for real. And you and, and you were like 21. A kid? I was like... Was you sleeping? I was calling I my mother like crazy. I'd be like looking. I wouldn't I even be able to sleep. I was scared to death, bro. I was scared to Did death. Did you have fun or were you just like... I had a lot of fun. You I, I fucked a lot of different animalistic <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Shit. Like I did. I used my dick so much in other countries <laughs> that I probably have a few children in other countries. Because I was in the pull-out type. And I just let it go right in. Bro. Yo, yeah. sometimes I think, what if they <laughs> pull out for what? <laughs> for what? For what? <laughs> Yo. They stamp Can you his imagine dick when he's done in each country? They just yeah. stamp his dick. Yeah. They you don't need a passport. <laughs> Can you imagine if social media existed in the nineties? Thank like, God people, it didn't. People were living <laughs> the craziest shit in the nineties and the eighties. They the live it the same now. Yeah. It's the same now. No, I think I it's at, soft now. You know who I look at? Carnage. He's a perfect example. Yeah. I look at his life. And I'm like, that reminds me of what we used to do. Mm. I know, I don't care if he's 600 pounds. He's fucking anybody he wants in these countries. <laughs> I promise you. Carnage. I prom no, I'm, no, I'm using him as an example because I, I, follow, I don't follow a lot of people like that, but I look at his life no. because it makes me feel young. When and I you're like, that guy. And I'm like, it. this dude is killing it. And yeah. he's out there just doing what we did. Man, it was it's crazy. Like It's crazy because I met Carnage a few times and he had, like, he had a girlfriend at the time, real baddie. 
So I yeah, see what of you're course. saying. Oh, yeah, of course. You think how well, what you look like matters? These bitches are looking at your pockets. They don't care about nothing else, man. I, well, I know she was looking at his pockets, but you know she was a baddie. Well, they are. That's what they're looking at. Sure. <laughs> Trust me, I, pro- I promise you. I promise you. What did uh, Chris Rock said? He said, on, <laughs> only dogs and children and women get unconditional love. A man has to what, you know, love what you can do for him. You are 1,000% <laughs> on point with that. And cats. Cats a little, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I like cats. I'm a cat guy. So then what was the fourth? Franklin's. Franklin's. Franklin's was, Franklin's was the fourth. Mm-hmm. And Crank call. Monster. Crank call. Crank, crank, crank call, crank call was, was right around there, though. Frank and calls on the other side of the Franklins, bro. Oh, so then it, 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 no, four it five. can't get any closer than that. Is it? I don't, I don't know. I don't Yo, remember. You, no, I you had my uh, discography in front of well, me. Well, there was the <laughs> says there was the one with Dougie Fresh. People, are you ready? That was, that and then it goes into the one twelve. That was right around that era, right? You like did one with the uh, Lord Tariq Peter Guns, right? Yeah, we did one with that. Yeah, oh yeah. That Cra- was no Crown that's Motiv- Cra- School. Crown Motivator was dope. Yeah, that was DJ Ace. Oh, Ace, okay. Bef- oh, Ace. You remember Ace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I always He's the that. person who said, "Let me see those hands. Let me see those hands. Yeah. Let me see." Oh, that's right. our chant. That belongs to us. It was said in my crib. That's yeah, a, that, that chant that belongs was a to us. That yeah. originated from, from from my house. house. Yes, it wow. came out was, of my house, so out of dope. my AKG microphone. Wow, yes. And that was over what Mona Lisa? You did the Mona Lisa. Yeah, dude, the right? dub was, was the one that blew up. Woo. Let me see those so hands. You, Let me see those. You guys hands. produced that one, but that was yes. DJ Ace. We, we just used him for a voice. He came over the house, uh-huh. put like pre scoop. That, that was before scoop, right? I think yeah, it, it was. Okay, that was like when. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, no, be faithful was not the first scoop record. Hands up. Yeah, hands up. With yeah, the, right. the yeah, Busta yeah, Rhymes yeah. beat. Right. Yeah, it was the yeah. first scoop record. That's right, yeah. With uh-huh. the, uh, yeah. Put your hands on my and then, And then the second yeah. scoop record was Where You At. Oh, my wild motherfuckers, where you at? Where wow, you man. at, 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 into a, uh, into a, uh, bin in it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah, right. yeah it's a uh, muddy power spec. So that was, that was the second one. Then, Be Faithful was the third scoop record. Okay, so how did you guys hook up on Fat Man Scoop? Fat Man Scoop came to us because he heard the Franklins. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Franklins and Flex was just bumping us and bumping us and bumping us and bumping us. Can and you explain? Because when I was growing up, I would see Fat Man Scoop on Tommy Boy record ads on the back of I'll the explain, source. I'll, yeah, I, yeah. All right. I, I was wanting to know who the fuck is Fat Man Scoop? What did he do? I don't know what he Fat did. Fat Man Scoop is a record promoter uh-huh. from Tommy Boy. Yeah, okay. He was just a record promoter. The guy you go see to get your free vinyl. Yeah. He was a record promoter okay. for Tommy Boy. And he started doing the overnight on Hot 97. So he was the midnight to 6, 5 a.m. guy, and then the morning crew would okay. come in. Because I remember him on the back of the source, like, playing basketball, Tommy Boy, and I was like, yo, that's the Tommy Boy guy when I was young. Playing basketball? Well, He was, he was like, like 500 pounds, bro. Yeah, no, no, but he w- it was a joke, like, on Tommy Boy Records. Definitely was, a yes. joke. <laughs> it had to be a fucking joke. <laughs> but I remember him on the back of the source and being Tommy Boy and be like, that's... F- who the fuck is that? And then we would start hearing about him. Yeah, he so he came to us. He's from the Bronx, mm-hmm. right? He came to us, you know, because of Flex pretty much because he was always in the studio when Flex was killing out his show and he would hear our records and he's like, yo, he reached out to Riz. He was got Riz's number somehow, reached out to Riz and was like, yo, I need you guys to help me make a record like these records you're making. I'm going to come and meet you guys, all right? So Riz was like, yo, I got this, you know, the, the Hot 97 guy overnight. Yeah. And he showed me his voice uh, on the radio. And I was like, yeah, you know, he sounds good. Let's let's see what he's got. So he came over my house. And everything happened in my house all the time. I wish I brought the pictures. You would love the pictures, bro. Yeah, I'm like. Send us the pictures. I'm, I'm 80 it. pounds soaking wet, bro. <laughs> with, I'm pale white as a fucking ghost. And, like, I got dirty hair and shit. And scoops on the mic. It's They're crazy pictures. But, um. He came, met us in front of my house, and he brought a dad with him. So I'm like, okay, let's go upstairs and listen. So we go upstairs, and it's his demo. It's his demo pre Crooklyn Clan. Mm-hmm. I would pay 10000 for that demo right now. Wow. So you can hear what he was doing before he met us. But I don't have it no more. Was he rapping? I don't even know what that was. That's what I honestly, and my memory's bad, but I ain't forget that. Trust me, it was like, it was just, it was like some Chub Rock, Treat Him Right type shit that he was trying to do, but in the new era. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when no one wanted it anymore. And you were like, you're not feeling this. I was this. like, no, 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 we can't do that with you. 
Uh, yeah. Right away, it was that Riz too is new. Right away, he was like, "Nah, we're not going to do that with him. Let's use him for chance, the right. same way we did with everyone else. We already had the formula. The formula was inked. We right. just knew how to do it. No matter what we got in terms of vocals, we can turn it into a so hit you guys wrote at that the, point. You guys basically wrote wrote with him. We wrote with him. You we wrote, wrote with him. Be faithful. What he was going to say, how he was going to say, it, all that. Shit. A combination. Uh -huh. But we wrote some, then he went and filled in the rest when it needed to be filled in. Like there were parts that where the chants were done, mm -hmm. and then there were emptiness. So we did all his chants, and then in the emptiness, like, yeah, baby, fat man, school girl, Glenn, this is how it go down, enough. He did mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know, he made up some of the um, phrases that he did, and we wrote some of the phrases mm -hmm. also. So it was just a combined, and I'm going to say this for the record, okay? Yeah. The fat man scoop entire you know what he is it was a three-man effort it wasn't a two-man effort me and riz it wasn't a one-man effort fat man scoop mm -hmm. it was a three-man effort riz scissor hands scoop that's the way it went yeah. he was like like family to me he used to come over my house and hug and kiss my mother you know what i'm saying this yeah. guy was family he was family to us so we made hands up and fucking, we got test presses. We brought it to Aviate. They loved it. Mark Petricone was like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. He sounds great. And Hands Up was a killer. It was so good in the clubs. Mm -hmm. We went, we hit, uh, Fat Joe was having a party in the second floor of, um, I think it was, uh, what, did, what was the exit before it was exit? Carbon. Speed? Carbon. Oh, there you go, you got it. Oh, I was doing the rooftop. Mm -hmm. Ted the Dillinger was... Mixing in the second floor. You remember Teddy. Yeah, I remember Teddy. Right? Said second floor, and uh, Boris, the house guy, yeah. was doing mm -hmm. the main floor. Yeah. Uh, and Fat Joe was having a party in, in, the, in Ted the Dillinger's room. Yeah. I walked into the room. Boop. Ted the Dillinger is the first DJ in the world to play a Fat Man Scoop vinyl with Crooklyn Clay. Wow. So we gave him the first test presses. Boom. And he hit it like six times. Like, oh, my God. People were like... Because it had the Buster, but yeah. it didn't have Buster. Right. It just had him for a minute, and then beat. he was gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, oh, man, that's dope. That's dope. You just saw the room starting to light up. It started getting lit, and we were like, oh, this is fucking awesome, man. We are going to blow up with this guy. And it was only two records later, and there came fucking Be Faithful. It was amazing. That's crazy. But it started with Hands Up, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like... That was the tester. If you listen to that record, you could hear errors in production. Like a, a millisecond late sample triggering and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So much like um, authenticity, like yeah, yeah, yeah. grassroots production in there of just like learning on, on the fly type shit. It was amazing, man. It was really an amazing time. But well, that's like analog hip hop, man. All yeah, the, all it, the, you know what I mean? The, like, the yeah. very, very early days of the digital yeah. switch over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Damn, that's fucking that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah. So then, so, when you did Be Faithful, well, like after you did Hands Up, we did Where You At, which uh -huh. was also very mm -hmm. good. It that worked was a, out well. It was a solid club record. Did you know yeah. Be Faithful was going to be Honestly, as big as it was? Pause. I knew it was going to be. You don't have to pause that. It's I okay. have to pause. <laughs> I have to I, you, pause. you can't get rid of that, can I can't. You? Can. You've had that since New York, right? Well, since I was in Spanish Harlem. Yeah, yeah. Just a, yeah, I yeah, know. Man. Pause. Hard. Hard. If I'm ever, God forbid, a little bad kitchen talk comes out, I'm like, oh shit, pause. Or, oh. If you're around, I do it too. If you're around too. Harlem cast too, it's like it just gets burned in your I, brain. I believe. Yeah, yeah. I believe. So Be Faithful was an anomaly, clearly. Yeah. You, you don't mm -hmm. see a Be Faithful. Like we've tried to duplicate I, it. Is it like Diamond? Oh, it's way. It's I don't even know what it is because it got licensed so many times by so many different companies, and so it's a jock jam, bro. Yeah. Be yeah. faithful is a motherfucking jock jam. It still works in the clubs. You'll hear it at every wedding, mm -hmm. barbecues, festivals. Fucking Skrillex brought it back crazy that time. He put it on. I had a video of Skrillex playing it and a sea of motherfuckers losing it, screaming, going crazy. It just makes my hair stand up on my body because I'm amazed at the, the longevity of the, of the track. Yeah, they like, the Be Faithful over. song wasn't even all... Nah. I mean, she must be fucking thanking us. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she must be... Faith must be... I love Crooklyn Clan. <laughs> well, you know, a you solid know, single, but it wasn't like... But you know when Faith Evans performs... She starts it with the Be of Faithful. Of course she yeah. does. When she Diddy, when Diddy performs, does she he, really? uses, he uses the Franklins. <laughs> no way. 
They all that's use crazy. my shit. That's crazy. So all like, of them. I've yeah. seen Faith Evans a couple of times on the Bad Boy tour, and uh, I saw her somewhere else. And she starts with the Be Faithful. I'm not mad at her. Bass all. drop, and then as soon as the chorus comes in, she, just she starts singing thing. the song. She she I am amazing. not mad at her because so we did not ask for permission. Well, so. and, it cr- <laughs> and, and like you said, Ed, it says it, it crushed over. Like, you got Skrillex on it. I mean, w- when I was still in Atlantic City, every time we'd have, like, Laid Back Luke, who was real hot at the time. I love Laid Back Luke. And he would always drop Be Faithful. Yeah, and Luke, he, it got so much support. Support of multi-genre DJs, you know what I mean? It was just one of those. It was one of those records that comes along. It's a pop just, record. Yeah. It's a yeah. pop. It's, it's still a classic. Pop party it's still record. classic. It's still yeah. rocks. And yeah. it will still, still get you out of a rough yeah. spot Huge. in the DJ it's night. Pop. If yeah, you drop well. that, it will get you. Crook, it, crooked it, don't know what a rough spot is, DJ, because he, he kills it from the beginning to the end. <laughs> right? nah, yeah. Ain't that right, Crooked? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone here. Everyone Ain't here. that right, Crooklyn? Everyone here is Crooklyn. Nev, I'm dying to hear you spin, man. I hope you invite me out. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. I have a question. We hear good things about you, man. I've been I haven't been to a party yet. I can't wait. Can't wait. We'll go. We'll go out this week. I, I, I have we'll a question. Go. What was the mastermind behind? If you have a hundred a uh, hundred dollars in your pocket, put your hands up. Single ladies, all the chant on that. Be faithful. What, who? What was the mastermind behind that? Like what? It just we just sat down and put it together. It's it, there wasn't even a mastermind. It was like, does this sound good? What do you think of this? Will this work? Will that work? It was a combined effort. The whole entire structuring of that record was a combined effort. Did you write any shit that didn't work? A lot work? of a lot of it. That didn't work? Yeah, tons well, of it. Like what? Like tons. what was the worst I mean, shit? Yeah, I know you gotta remember so, one of them. It's, you, you see how my how bad my memory is, bro? <laughs> you can't think of like one thing? Or? It's been a rough ride. <laughs> like you you're looking for like a blooper from Be Faithful, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Oh my God! Can you imagine? The How first, many demos were there before you draft the final? Be faithful. There were no demos. I gotta be honest with you. All oh, my ladies with my real hair, all that shit. <laughs> so, in the in the, the <laughs> real hair, the process of producing those records was okay. Scoop, say this four times. Say that four times. Say that four times. Say that four times. Say that four times. Yeah. He, he didn't sequence it. He didn't put it together. It was live. He just no no no. He just said it four times and then left. And then me and Riz took the best out of the four, and then we put it together the best Ooh. way we felt like it went. Mm-hmm. That's how we made it. You, did, so you did some Reza shit. Wow. We did. We, 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 that's how we made every song. Wow. You did some wow. Reza, like Wu-Tang Reza I didn't know shit. they did that with, with vocals, but yeah, that's how we that's put how we'll every really record. Have. Ace, Scoop, Sticky in the Hoods. We did Sticky Niggas in the, the Front. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. We made yeah. that too. That's all the same formula, our formula. We take... We say, say this, say that. He'll write some. We'll mm-hmm. write some. It'll all be, you know, and just we have this big. I got some from Little John in the crib right now. I was just on the phone with him yesterday. I'm making a Little John track oh, right wow, now. Oh, wow, man. So, yeah. He gives Don't call me it ch- a comeback. Gives me chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, that's how we do it. That's just the way we do it. We can't sit there and let you sing a song on a microphone or it's going to be missing that appeal. There's this kind of sample appeal that yeah, we yeah. had. You got to loop I think it, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, DJs get it. it they know worked, what I yeah. mean. It just feels like it's not a real vocal record. And you want to kind of have that feeling from hey, You want it to right? sound you know, the same as, you, as it repeats right. every, every time. time every right, time, and then yeah. And you even want that sample kind of feeling. Right. Like mm-hmm. when you're going, hands up, hands up, hand, you know? I mean, yeah. that's what we wanted back then. It's just wait it's 2018 now everything is so different yeah uh, you know so you said you said uh riz he he kind of like knew when shit was gonna be hot did he yeah. know it with that break or did it was it just be faithful was an anomaly like i said we made it i think to be honest with you it was scoop's idea to use faith evans mm-hmm. because scoop you know it's a so he's a soulful dude He's got like a very, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. and and it seems like something he would want to use. And then we yeah. both agreed. I'm pretty sure that was how that went. I mean, I can't be coined because my memory is really shot, mm-hmm. but I think that's how. But it, it was got. brilliant uh, putting like the queen pen with with that shit. Yeah, yeah. that was fucking just, brilliant, yo. Yeah, how did that come about? Right, mm-hmm. that the second part of the engine. Because that was the, the best wall. part of the queen pen song. You know how much money that part cost which, us? How much? Which part? party? The party is a party. Oh right, yeah, right. Up in the fire sample. Uh, yeah, well, that's, on your that face. Was the inter- yeah, yeah. That was the intermissions. The din, 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 that's but how you also the, used you also used you another Queen Pen record, uh, the beginning of Man Behind the Music. Ding, 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 ding. Do, oh, do, 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 do. Where my dogs at? That was a uh, that was a uh, prank call. You used another oh, piece yeah. of <laughs> Queen. <laughs> yeah, where my ding, 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 ding. Yeah, 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 yeah. How much did that one part cost? The engine, engine on the wall. It was retarded. 
I, how much it costed us, what I mean by the fact that dude didn't want to let us use like be fake dress be fake i don't know a who black it was sheep? somebody yeah, from sheep. black sheep just killed a movie deal for us last year we got a movie deal for office house party office party you ever see that yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. that was some whack ass cheesy movie anyway mm -hmm. thank you i don't give a fuck but it was a good payday for us they wanted be faithful for the movie and, and some, he would have gotten paid too right uh, yeah but i guess he wasn't happy with the percentage that he was going to get paid so, or the, the he made didn't some, they didn't they use on let me clear my throat <laughs> instead? Yeah, they did. Yeah, of course it was one guy and one beat. Yeah, and that was it. They had to worry about. See, when be faithful comes in a mix, you got to take care of a couple of people on that. So you know, while I don't mind taking a thinner check on it, it was still a twenty thousand dollar check for me because it was going to be a nice payday right for them to use that's a pretty good check that's Man, a really I, I come good. right that's to your good. i come to your check. clothing store with that check baby 35 dollars a t-shirt i'm gonna need that what about the other movie like the, what was it dance the night or something like, what, what, what oh yeah it? save the last save dance. the last we, dance we're in that movie too yeah we, we made good money on that well, I, was I get an ass cap check four times a year and it's it's nice and that's really because of the movie and be faithful you know like the movies, Save the Last so, Dance was a good, yeah, that was a, that was a good movie. But yeah. you didn't really, we, you didn't know that Be Faithful was going to be the mega hit that it was until like the later years when you're like, yo, this shit is still working. <laughs> no, we knew it was the biggest, we knew it was the biggest record we ever made right away because of Flex's reaction really? to it. Flex dictates hip hop. Whether you want to accept that or not, in New York City and across the Eastern mm -hmm. Seaboard, that motherfucker is a, the boss. Mm -hmm. So if he plays it and he likes it, it blows up. I knew we all knew it was a monster. We needed to play it every night, and but I, I, I don't think we really realized it till maybe like towards the late two thousand. We're like, yo, this shit. It's still working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, it, like, I snap out from it. I it like transcends generations. Yeah. And then, like, like people that have no idea yeah. who Faith Evans is knows be faithful. And right. then when we started hitting like the O tens, we're like, yo, we're still playing this shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was, I was saying that Darren is like the biggest DJ record there is. Absolutely. Well, it might question. be one of them for sure. No, it's probably yeah. the it's best. We're still playing that shit. We're still playing. We're still playing, man. Record are you playing? Franklin's. I'm still playing. You still play Franklin? Don't tell me you. Don't Frank play Thug Anthem. I made that. You guys didn't do I evidence, did. though, right? Yeah, we did. You did do evidence. Yeah, we did. We, la, Cypher la, Sounds la, did it. Cypher Sounds you know, did it originally, and then we did, it, we did it with Fat Man School. I got a story uh, for Thug 2000. Um, Viz gave me the... Wright he, Brother pressing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. We, we left Mark. We wanted to teach him a lesson. That's right. Yeah, there and was we, a double we taught, him, he, we taught him some fucking lesson, let I, me tell you. <laughs> I bumped into Viz at a nightclub. I think it was Shine. And he was like, yo, I got this new new record. And you, I want to give you a copy. And I'm like, bet. And it was Thug 2000. And I was like, damn. That this was, is hot, right? I, like, I love shit, that record. Man. I love yeah. that record. Yeah. Yeah. That it just jumps off so hard when it hits. Spit that out. Yeah, man. Yeah. And people just like it. They yeah. like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was, I was crazy because you had... But that, I mean, obviously that was one of the biggest records, but then you had the evidence to go into, and then you could just like, it like was linger a around around. It was that. a rhythm. It was yeah. a, actually like a rhythm. You yeah. could play yeah. like a few songs that had, yeah. had the track over it. Yeah, definitely. The same thing was for Hands Up, too, because you had the, the reggae version of that. There was, oh, yeah. With the, the, what's her name? Sox, your eyes can uh, see? Foxy. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Bob. Someone tell me. What, goggle. It was Goggle. Goggle. By uh, yeah, Tanya oh, Stevens. Yeah. Tanya yeah. Stevens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, on the, yeah. Oh, uh, you mean on the white, the white and red bootleg? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pounding to the head. And then Sprague you and know Ben had one too. Why were you looking? Why were you looking so confused? Because all I'm hearing is blah 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 blah. Either one of these speak, is speaking in tongues, or I didn't, I didn't. Know what, I, I totally understood what he was saying. I you speak uh, scissor hands patois. Oh, so then, do I have my own language? I know so I you spit don't. A you, lot. So you don't know how like if you're. Be Faithful's got to be over Diamond or something. It's got to be something. The crazy. problem is, is that some really bad business went down with Be Faithful later on. So we lost track of what's like, I can't even tell you how many labels it's on. I know Def Jam owns the rights to it now. They bought it from, from they didn't buy it, but they took it. Like, see, the way the deal went, Def Jam came at Aviate mm -hmm. for a deal for Be Faithful and an album deal for us to do. And, uh, well, for Scoop, they came with an album deal for Scoop. And uh, 
the paperwork didn't go right. Let's just put it that way. It didn't go right. And uh, that's when we split from school. And that's when we stopped understanding what was going on with the record. Mm. So we got the internet and we got as much as we can. And I have my ASCAP check showing me with, that it's being played everywhere. So, I mean, but I can't track it anymore. I don't have any, you know, some real dirty shit went down. So we, me and Riz got left holding our dicks. But that's because we weren't, you know, when you're young like that, man, mm -hmm. and shit like that is happening to yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. it's really fucking amazing, you know? You just, like, can it's like out of left field. You're like, oh my God, we thought we were doing good with the party breaks. Mm -hmm. You know, then that record came and it was like all the greed and everybody just right, starts right. coming out. You start seeing motherfuckers' true colors. So underneath. then after that, you stopped with Fat Man Scoop. You guys split No, ways? no. We actually made uh, one more song with Fat Man Scoop that was on Funkmaster Flex's album. But was, I the mean, the payday was really good, so okay. we couldn't say no. But uh, we were going through the motions and issues with Fat Man Scoop at the time. It was awkward? Well, the problem is, is that the deal was for Scoop. Scoop was telling Riz and myself not to use a lawyer. And the owner of Aviate was getting funny with us. He wouldn't pay us anymore unless he paid Scoop first. This shit went so sour, dude. Wow. I can't even, like, this story is, it is a bad, like, y'all will be like, this is really, this is this industry for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It didn't go right for it's me. Just, it's it just didn't go right for me. Yeah. It's yeah. just unfortunate because it would, I feel like it could still be going on. Of course it could, but it yeah. never will. I will never work with that man. I don't care. I'm not interested in working with him. I got, I got a million voices. I just told you, John, give us chance. Yeah. We got freaking... DJ Cool still that and he just killed it with Khaled on stage. Uh -huh. So you know people want to hear it, the club misses a little bit more energy like yeah, that. Yeah, you know yeah. misses it. It's got a lot of a lot of down tempo bottle popping shit, which is cool. And I fuck with all music. I like everything, but hey, and and we, we need some some hara yeah. needs to come back. And I'm, I'm here to try to do it. You know, so, it's yeah. but it's also so hard to like resample some of the new music now. And there's no acapellas. You can't really. I have every it, right? acapella. Yeah. Good, yeah. I have every acapella oh, ever yeah. made. You do. Ever made. Even now for the new music? The new, old, you name it. It's scary. I don't... It's, it, yeah, Ed, Ed getting, will yeah. tell you How the fuck do you get that? I'm, I'm magical, bro. Nah. Yeah. I could do these things. Uh, you haven't heard my mashups. <laughs> you haven't heard my mashups lately, have you? I gotta hook hey, you up with some. Hey, says where, where in the, the whole Scoop thing did the uh, the Beat Nuts record, uh, Let's Get Dough, you guys produced that and Scoop was on that in the beginning, no, right? Or what was the deal? We were, we were part of putting his samples on it. See, the way Scoop felt was that he didn't want to spit. We got him used to spitting four times something and us putting it on a record. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he was very mic shy. Like he didn't, he was afraid that he wasn't gonna get it right in a studio. So when Timbaland called, he had to bring us. So we were there making the Timbaland record with him. Then when Beat Nuts, you know, it was just like a- You were like his auto tune. Yeah, yeah. We, yes. <laughs> You wow, know what? Yeah. In a nutshell, we were his his vocal coach. We were his support yeah. vehicle. We yeah, were his yeah. support vehicle. He needed you guys. Yeah, and you know something? We had no problem being with him. Mm -hmm. We had no problem being with him. I loved him like a brother. But you know, there's a lot loved of like a there's a lot of vocalists like singers like Rihanna. She has her own engineer who engineers her vocals on any production. There so. it goes. Yeah. So you know, people get used to their sound. Yeah. Even John, John is picky about his sound too. Mm -hmm. If I mix his vocal and don't come out right, he'll he'll start yeah. yelling at me. So sure. I'll, I'll be like, yo, let me put let me yeah. double it up some more. He likes mm -hmm. that heavy. Double, Nowadays, so. and those engineers and those guys that engineer like all of these vocalists or uh, any of the mu music or the auto tuned dudes that do the engineering for autotune like travis scott's autotune guy kanye west's autotune guy those guys go on the road on tour with him because there's no one else that can make it sound like that or knows what I he's gonna do Mike Dean just the echoes yeah. and shit for, it's for crazy. travis especially crazy. Yeah. travis got a very unique mix down but even his, yeah you know his it's address. like traveling with Mike your stylist Mike is yeah. the one that's but always then, with them but then we were also uh i was even told about rihanna and a couple other singers they only use their engineers because they they can tune it just right. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 they sound like shit uh, like with any other engineer. But you guys were kind of like that. It was not even that we were engineering. No, we but were, you, we you guys were like, like, yeah. I felt like it was more he than needed that. us on that type like of a level. Moral it was a little support. more. Yeah, yeah. Like he felt comfortable with y'all. Like yeah. he felt safe to do whatever he, he did. did. Yeah. That's why I can't understand why it went the way it went, man. Can't understand it. Like EPMD. I could never understand that either. You know? They just split up and like. That shit got weird though, right? Yeah. 
it just it was weird. like they was they just dropped that hot album but then out of nowhere no, but you like, know why you can tell that it was a money argument money just but fucks people same lives thing with brand nubian though right i mean yeah well you know nah, what that it was pooba just had the voice and and sadat had a different sound when they broke like off you mm-hmm. heard the difference like right. pooba mm-hmm. made yeah. commercial music and sadat kind of made commercial music too i don't know man it's tough to really tell mm-hmm. why they broke up it but, really and is. The EPMD shit was was crazy. Like Eric Sermon was like breaking into Paris Paris's crib. Remember? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right there, yeah. that's some crazy that. shit. Is that you true though? That. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. They were like Charles. It, it was on like an unplugged. Um, it was on some TV show, a documentary. No, no, no. They even said that like in a Source magazine, an interview, like that his place got broken into, and they were trying to find some shit, and they were like contracts or what. I don't know what the fuck they were trying. Wow. It was you a money I mean? thing. The yeah. same. Yeah. It was pretty much similar with us in school, man. He was like, "Nah, y'all don't need a lawyer. Don't worry, you use my lawyer." He told us, "Yo, I will never." Hit. Let me just ask y'all all a question. Every DJ in the room, okay, and people that ain't DJs, name a single motherfucking time you saw me, Scoop, and Riz on stage. Never, never, mm-hmm. never. No. But did Scoop travel the world doing that song? Of course. Does man. he still travel the world doing that song? Yeah. yeah. Do you think something is wrong with that? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you understand the depth of how much involvement we have making this music, and the depth of where we brought his, him career-wise, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yeah. shouldn't we? Shouldn't we have been there? Of course. Yeah. The yeah. reason why we're not there, he will tell you, is because of me, because I got mad that the lawyer told us, our lawyer told us, you can't sign the contract. And I wouldn't sign the contract. If a lawyer tells me not to sign a contract and he's my lawyer, I'm not signing the contract. Mm-hmm. Right. The lawyer circled a bunch of shit on the contract. He was like, look, you're not gonna have anything. You won't have any ownership of this record. They're raping you. They're doing this and that, 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 that. Look, he pointed it all out. Riz saw it, I saw it. We seen it, you know what I'm saying? It was there and it was like, damn. Why, bro? And then Scoop, I don't know what's in the contract, so how could you tell us not to have a lawyer? Because my lawyer will handle it for all of us. Mm -hmm. But we're separate entities, bro. He he went around, and he was Fat Man Scoop, Crooklyn Clan, without us, so. I mean, fuck. uh, Yeah, I mean, yo, it was millions of dollars. Now, we we got fucked out of millions of dollars. Well, Sis, I don't know if you, you, but remember, uh, didn't he, he create a, a, his own kind of... Uh, well, he had guys that he rolled with, yes. Which he called... So, Cro- well, yeah, he would say Fat Man Scoop, Crook and Clan, and it was no, like... No, I'm Crooklyn, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> man... Were you, you on tour, No, too? but didn't they do Brooklyn Clan? No, 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 that didn't... They didn't do Brooklyn Clan. What happened was Apple Music, somebody changed the lyrics from Crooklyn Clan. Like, if you look up my record right now on Spotify, look up Be Faithful, you won't see the name Crooklyn Clan no more. You'll say what? Fat Man Scoop. Ooh. Right. See, now if you get the first pressing of the Be Faithful so vinyl. So you don't get paid for none of those shows? No, I get paid. Okay, okay. But, there's, but they fucked us on the exposure because they don't want people calling us for shows. They right. want people they calling. Want show Man money's Scoop. where it all comes from. Who right, the fuck right, right. wants stream money? Fuck a stream money. It, D- Diplo don't make a lot of stream money. You don't make a lot of money on streams. Yeah, yeah. But you make money on shows. And the reason why it's like that, and, I'm, and it is a speculation. But I'm going to say that it's pretty on point, in my opinion. My speculation is because of people calling for shows and saying, who is Crooklyn Clan? Right. What is Crooklyn Clan? When you look at the first vinyl pressing of Be Faithful, it is Crooklyn Clan featuring Fat Man Scoop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That way it always was, the way it always should be. Right. The way it should have been, because it was our sound. It was our sound. You listen to the Franklins. You listen to the records that came before Be Faithful. It was your platform, too. Doesn't you know it I mean? sound? Yeah. Doesn't it sound like Be Doesn't Be Faithful sound like us? Yeah. Like, when you listen yeah. to our records, I'm asking DJ. 100%. Right? Yeah. D- yep. Yeah. Right? Okay. So I got all y'all in the room agreeing with me. Mm-hmm. And go type my fucking record on Spotify. You don't yeah. see Mia Riz's name. No it doesn't way. come up. I just, I'm looking it up. Yeah, it says Be Faithful, it's Fat Man Scoop. And yeah. there's like, a, yeah, there's like, and there's also like a Fat Man Scoop playlist or the greatest hits with no, ma- and, and it'll have people like, oh, Pitbull and this. And yeah. There's no mention no, of Crooklyn Clan. Yo, very they, foul. He, I, foul. Yo, they fucked us hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What they don't understand is that they are lucky that I'm a fucking genius, and I made a website that made me millions of dollars anyway. Because if I didn't, homie would be in a hole. 
All right, and I'm going to say it on the radio. Come see me if you don't like it. That's just the way it is. He would be in a hole, and I would be dead or in jail if that website didn't work because he fucked us. He told me and Riz, I promise y'all, I'll never go without you. I promise. I promise. I promise. And he went, go, gone ahead and went without us. You see how it went. Go on Apple Music. They changed the lyrics from Fat Man Scoop Brooklyn Clan to Fat Man Scoop Brooklyn Clan. Oh, that's right. That's what, oh, that's wow. where it went. Oh, my that's God. That's where that one came from. Ooh. And there's nothing you could do about it. Like, you can I mean, I'm, I'm or... making phone calls. I'm yelling at fucking Spotify. These motherfuckers, they disco dance with you all day. They don't come back and do shit. The only thing I was able to do me a uh, you can't because we can't play right now, but um, Shazam. So Shazam, mm -hmm. and this was how I, I caught on to the whole shit of what they were doing to us. On Shazam, I put Be Faithful one time just to see what happened. I yeah. probably have to... It had us all, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I put it again another time and it didn't have us all. Wow. It just had him. So I'm like, they had it right. And now they have it wrong? Nah. Somebody made a phone call right, and yeah. switched shit up on us. Mm -hmm. Someone made a phone call, switched yeah. shit up on us. There's no question about it. There's no lying about it. There's Damn. two of them, right? Yeah. There's three of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, but when you play the song into the phone, ours will come up now. Right, okay. Because good. I called, I got nuts with Shazam. I was like, yo, y'all motherfuckers, make sure you put our names on there or you'll be getting a lawsuit. What? I just yelled at them and they switched it back right away. Well, the whole, yeah, the whole thing is just like if you want to go through the long litigation with lawyers and just go through it, and it, it, it's probably a, a pretty, super miserable experience. You know why, yeah. bro? I'm comfortable. I don't, yeah. I don't really give a fuck anymore. It is what it is. Dude did what he did. He has to know in his heart. He has to know. He has to know in his heart that what happened... And how that shit went down isn't the way it was supposed yeah. to be. He has to know. Have you seen him recent, recently? I, or I, into him I or? DJ'd a gig in Long Island mm -hmm. four years after the beef where we stopped talking to one another. Yeah. And he just so happened to be performing at that show. And I just so happened to have, I don't know, 120 goons in the audience with <laughs> me the night he was performing. He left without his money. He bounced. He knew what time it was. It, I wasn't gonna hurt him. I would never. I'm not. I'm not that guy. I, just, I wasn't gonna. I just wanted to have not, a conversation. No, I just wanted. I just wanted him under pressure. I just wanted him to feel pressure when he was in the club. That's it. I just mm -hmm. wanted angry looking Italian dudes looking at him. That's it. So that he understood. Shit. I never got more shout outs in my life than that night. But That's whatever. Amazing. It is what it is. I'm not that guy. I'm not. I'm not a gangster. I'm a businessman. I'm a music producer. I'm a dope DJ. I could kill any dance floor. I just don't appreciate when um, somebody sticks it in like that. Mm -hmm. That's so wrong. That was our sound. It yeah. was out. We invented it. Well, mm -hmm. Rap Genius Rap exactly, still yeah. has the the Crooklyn Clan, and they have you and Rizzo's producer. Some places do. Yeah, Rap some some places do. But you know what? The main spots. The main spots. Man, check title. By you over there, you doing good, uh, good work over there. Because <laughs> I, you know, I never even checked title because I, I didn't I think I didn't there. think title mattered. But the thing is, everybody knows you guys. Everybody knows Crooklyn. No, I, he not says everybody. the same shit. Not everybody. You're wrong, yeah, man. We're DJs, no. so we Listen, know. Nah, DJs don't even know. D DJs <laughs> your age knows. Understand these young bucks that are coming up. So they don't know it's Crooklyn. Some of them they just don't. think it's Fat Man's school. Some of them don't. Yeah, all of them. You ask young bucks that are DJing. Some of these cats are open for you if you even talk to them. I don't know how you'll get down with them, but try to talk to one of these young bucks and say, who made this record? They're going to say Fat Man's school. But guys from your era and your era will say Crooklyn Clan right. yeah. because y'all know that it was us that mm -hmm. made the record. Yeah. You yeah. know the truth. You knew before I walked in this room that it was our sound. Mm -hmm. You knew it was our sound. You yeah. had the records preceding it. And you have the records after <coughs> that we made. It was our sound. We got, somebody took our sound and ran with the ball, Ned. That's what happened. Right, perfect example, Jamie. Did you know it was Crooklyn Clan or? No, I knew. Uh, Darren put me up on it. So before uh, that, you didn't know. Yeah, it was I, I'd been on it since I heard it like in I'd middle school that, dance. Sure. Like, did you know it was Crooklyn? Yeah, Clan? I knew it was Crooklyn Clan. Okay, so some people do, but now you have to think about these young kids. They're 18, 19, 20 hearing this song and liking it, mm -hmm. and now they're going to to Spotify and they're looking for it and they're not finding our names on it. Apple Music has it as Fat Man Scoop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Apple and, Music um, and Spotify title, title have it as Fat Man Scoop. Yeah. Title has it as Fat Man. All right, let's go yeah, again. It takes cool. We did. It takes cool. Also. Oh, that yeah. was huge. Yeah, we that's, yeah. yeah. That it takes scoop. We didn't even do that. That's tremendous. That's that's, pla that's another platinum that's, record. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. So it's huge. if you look huge. at it takes. 
Scoop, which they changed the name of it to It Takes Scoop. We made that record with Cool. It had nothing to do with Scoop. We made that record with Cool. I didn't know they changed the, Wait, the they name. Wait, they changed? I didn't know that Scoop, either. Scoop heard the record and was like, there's no way he's getting that record. I have to have that record. So we said, we're not doing that to Cool. And then he went and made, made it with Cool instead. And then changed the whole name of it to It Takes Scoop. All wow. right? Listen, listen to wait, me. Wait, 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 what? I can't be more serious with you. Money fucks shit up. Makes people act out of line. Straight up. Makes them act like their morality just disappears right the fuck out of their body. Okay? You lose your morality, your sense of what is right and wrong for money. Scoop and me, though it may not seem, we are very similar individuals. My head is in business 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I am a businessman and a creative. Yeah. Scoop is one of the... And you would never believe it, but he's one of the smartest people I know. He is fucking brilliant because he's smart. He understands the business very well and how to manipulate. He is an excellent manipulator, okay? The better you can manipulate, the further you're going to go in this world. Mm -hmm. Manipulating is making another person believe what you believe or what you want them to. And he has that ability and he does it well. Okay, and he uses it, and he knew from jump. I'm not gonna, Riz will disagree with me on this. When y'all get Riz up here, there will be some holes where he's gonna say, I know Sis feels this way, and I feel this way. All right, because he's not 100% about the lawyer that we had, but it was his lawyer. He brought the lawyer. Right. The lawyer was Mackay Pfeiffer's lawyer. So he wasn't doing music business necessarily as much as he was doing. Uh, Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood, but make no mistake, what was written in this contract was unmistakably horseradish, straight up. I can't even think of another word for it. It was terrible. It was just, here you go, crook and clam, whoosh, to the side. Here's this money, go away. Now, this is a fat man scoot show. That's what the contract made for, for mm. the situation. And that's what the lawyer said, no. The lawyer was a personal friend of, of Riz's. And... Um, you know, he didn't like it, man. He didn't like it. He looked at it. He wasn't even professional about the way he said no. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, well, guys, I think we need to change but, this. But, he was but, like, no fucking way you're not signing this. It's terrible. That's what he said. So the, the question is, it, it comes down to, you said that, you know, you keep creating. You got your website, which I want to go back to, and I want to talk about your website. You know what I mean? And, but as far as Fat Man Scoop, he hasn't continued. I mean, I'm sure he's done the same shtick that he's done where he's on, you know, acapellas and he's singing over beats and stuff. But it's not where he's continually creating and breaking new ground and doing other stuff. Do you Neither know what I mean? Neither are we, though. Huh? Neither are we. I mean, I mean, are we? You know, we have Crooklyn Clan and I'm putting guys on. Uh -huh. So I went, I went from the guy doing it to the guy putting guys on. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I'm listening to these new sounds and I dibble dabble. You know what I'm saying? Right. Me, it's a matter of what is most important to me is business now at 45 years old, right. keeping things intact. I feel like DJing once a month at most. Do I get like an urge to go in a room and play music? Because mm -hmm. it's not that important to me anymore. That's why I didn't come out here and press it. I, I could have done I could have done gigs for him. You know, I could have played. I could play for Blueprint if I want. You know, I'm just not. It's not what I want to do right now. Not, it's not my main focus. You know what I mean? I'm focusing Thanks. on business and internet and you should really just make it a little cooler in here your man it looks like you and on the foul line right now <laughs> <laughs> looks like you and on the foul line. yo you sweating good right it's now right? Nah, it's, it's, it's pretty fucking i'm, 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 I'm shiny man i'm shiny baby i'm just shining holy shit you man. shining baby. i'm just shining, shining. Right, my, <laughs> but you, you got you got seven dicks in one one room i mean yeah. it's gonna be hot pause you know what i mean <laughs> he gotta keep pausing too he, he's stuck in the pause like stuck you in that like, pause like, dude. Yo, shit this is like like a fucking, this is worse than a locker room. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's hot yeah, in here. It's hot as fucking here. Jamie is probably, the, all the heat is coming from Jamie's ass, probably. Jamie. I'm cool, I'm chilling. <laughs> I was just like, I saw how she like, keep doing this. Oh, like, shit. Fucking Eddie's arm is getting a tan and shit. I got norms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. You're mean, man. Don't nah, be so nah, mean. Nah, nah, I mean, nah. It's all love. It's all love. Uh, yeah, man. sure. Um, well, I mean, fuck. What were we talking? Oh, yeah, we were talking about the site. Let's, yeah. let's let's go to the site. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the site. All right. So you guys were killing it around what, when it? Because I would say you guys were one of the first besides 
DJ City that had a We're sound. the first. Way you are. Yeah. We're the first way before DJs. Way before. Four years before. I think DJ City came on around 2006. Four years before? 2006 DJ City? Seven. No, we yeah. opened in 2006 DJ City. Seven. Are we like oh, eight DJ or nine? Oh, nine. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. No, well, DJ, no, DJ no. City's been around. Before that. Somebody, they were selling vinyl they weren't, a long time. Yeah, yeah. they weren't yeah. They weren't they an weren't MP3 a shop. They no, that was a record pool. I've been a member since MP3 one. But what I would it? say even either nah. way, you guys were the first. We were the first. Mm -hmm. What we you guys were the, the first, first like boutique like, mashup boutique. <laughs> I like, call it a party boutique. break. Yeah. yeah, it was a boutique because we charged you five dollars a song, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it was a, a song you weren't getting anywhere else. Well, was it a? There wasn't a membership, right? No, okay. we, memberships and all that shit happens now. Now we got it. It's so dope now. It's right. not even fun. J John just asked for a password too. I was like, Ah, you coming back, baby? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, there's fire on there now, and it's just ridiculous. But back then it was uh, a la carte. Whatever you buy has a price tag right. on it. People would wait for sales. It was really good. It was exciting, you know. It was something. What what new. What, what, it, what made you want to start that? It was really like, see, I'm a computer nerd. So I mean, don't get it. I'm not even gonna lie about it. I'm just a nerd. I'm like a dead mouse of hip hop. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I'm a computer nerd. I'm up on technology all the time. I would actually call you and Riz the Daft Punk of like party breaks and hip hop. Kind Maybe of shit. Yeah. that's that's cool. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Crook. Can I, I, I would smile? Coin that. Yeah. I, I would just, coin that. I and I call y'all the Ed Lover and Dr. Trey <laughs> Radio. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, as a consumer, the thing I loved about Crooklyn Clan was like, if there was a specific few producers I liked, I would follow them on Crooklyn Clan and see what they had coming mm, out yeah, new. Yeah, yeah, you could still do that. Yeah, that's so just it was the way just we like, always did it. Yeah, cool. I like, I like. We made it a competition. I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what we yeah. did. We made it a competition. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to sit here and pay somebody money that they don't deserve. So instead, I'm going to pay more money than anybody would even think of giving away. Fifty percent of the entire website we give to the editors. You know, where where I will I won't name other websites, but I will tell you they just hit dudes off and make other dudes put edits up free mm -hmm. with that bullshit story of how they're doing them the favor. Right. That's a bullshit story. You're not doing anybody a favor letting them edit for your site. You're not. They deserve to be paid of that's, their editing. That's real. That's crazy. So I take I don't I have been that guy for the underdog from day one. I I can't tell you how it annoys me when a monopoly of DJs won't let somebody in because he's good. Uh, you know what it is. Y'all are in that monopoly. Mm -hmm. You ain't them guys per se, but you know what this what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that bothered me always, and it was like, how do I? How what can I do about this? So it's my stage. The whole world is looking for us. We have the stage right now to introduce the world to different people. And now what's gonna be the approach? So the approach for me was, what are all the things as a DJ I couldn't stand about managers, promoters, etc. We didn't contract a single person, no contracts. You can come work for us, do anything you want. Right. The only thing we ask is that you don't edit for another website like ours, that's all. Keep your edits exclusive, mm -hmm. no problem, but no contracts. So we just blew one guy up after the other. Mac J comes Pause. from Crooklyn Clan. Mm -hmm. Blew up. Blew up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Mac J comes from Crooklyn Clan. Beat Breaker. Um, help me out, Eddie, because my memory is so shot. There's so many guys that come from... All right, so I heard Scene's interview with you. He didn't even mention Crooklyn Clan. Mm -hmm. It was a big part of him also. He was right, putting right. that it's out with us for a long time. Mm -hmm. I was a little upset because he was dope. You know, yeah. no, no, no. But uh, he, Victor Menigo, every DJ that made a connection made it through us. Like Sprite and Kevin Scott met yeah, through yeah. Crooklyn Clan. Did you, you have, know? You had gigahertz, right? Maybe at one point. Yeah. I don't know. It got to a point where we had, you know, people were using Crooklyn Clan to meet one another. Yeah. yeah. And then formulate against us. It like, was big. We used to we used to like look at that shit and be like. Yo, these motherfuckers are getting paid off of this shit? Are, know, they, yeah. are they making money off of this? Yo, I, I, I kid you not. Yeah. A top editor will call home with 10000 a month. Nice. Wow. So, I mean, that's better than Fuck. DJ. That's better than DJ money. You know what I'm saying? We got, still now, we got 1,000 monthly users almost. We're in the change area. Wow. Correct Back then, we were in the 
thousand user area. Damn. So we were paying Discotech. You ever heard of Discotech? Yeah, I was just about to ask that, you. We with, built with we, Joe Maz. We and, put uh, Joe Maz yeah. on. We put Danny Days on. Yeah. We put. Um, there's so many, it's ridiculous. I, would, I wish I, I first could look, heard a disco take through. I wish I could look yeah. at the old roster. Yeah. But Mac yeah. J is one of the biggest ones that come. The, the one, one of them that went the furthest after being in Beat Breaker section on Crooklyn Clan. The guy plays Fat Man Scoop record. He doesn't even say Crooklyn Clan. A lot of people don't want to rep it. They don't want to say they came from it. And I don't understand why. Maybe they think it's corny. Who knows what it is that they think. I'm the motherfucking Walmart of this shit. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> yeah. I'm the Walmart of this shit. But you will get mixes that will kill in your club to this day. That's it. I don't care what kind of party it is. A motherfucking bar mitzvah. Whatever you're <laughs> DJing, bro. Wait, when did you start the Crooklyn Clan? What is it, .net? Yeah. When did you start that? 2006. 2006. We started it in 2005, but had to shut it down because uh, we didn't have our legal paperwork right. So we got a little strife. Then we went, got some good lawyers. We dug through the loopholes. And we yeah, because because I think after that, you had like the opening page disclaimer, like agree here. Yeah, you blah, remember. Blah, blah. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. that was the breaking point, right? Yeah, That's yeah. when we figured out how we have to deliver it. Right. And now... The way it has to be delivered is totally different. You can't even, like the way DJ City does it, they're being given a pass, obviously, because the legal way to do it, you have to have people have to be members to just listen to the music. They can't even play. Otherwise, you can get in trouble for being an entertainment website streaming other people's music. Mm. So there's a lot of thing, a lot of a lot of pieces of that that have to be done the right way, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I mean, honestly, so I got nothing but love for every you, everyone else. So it's doing Clan. Uh, .net now. It's, it's always been. been. It's always yeah. been. Yeah. Okay. It's and always it, been. And then, like, so you guys have been around 12 years. <coughs> yeah. 12 online. And, and 12 online. As long as you know. Yeah, yeah. Since almost, damn, 30. So, yeah. Almost as old as you. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> our, our name brand is almost as old as you. Yeah. <laughs> so it, is there anything you, you want to evolve the site to? As it, you know what I mean? Well, we've as done... We we did something that was really interesting and it really worked extremely well with Little John, Greg Nice from Nice and Smooth, yeah. uh, DJ Cole, and a couple of people where we were letting people order, write a script, and order them saying the script mm. on the site and oh, really? like a drop. Cr better than a drop. It was literally if you own a fucking orange stand, as long as the artist agrees to say it, like it's in the disclaimer, like no religious shit, no profanity, unless the artist says okay, you know, blah blah. It was all we had the whole logist the legal parts of it are still laid out. If you mind, well, what's the cost for like a little? It, John? it depends on who it was. Little John was uh, for how many lines? One line, one, one line, one sentence. We sold the about worth of those wow greg nice we sold about yo you know cool it mattered we would talk to them and then we would find out how hard would it be for you to just be selling acapellas i said we have acapellas but we don't sell them we have acapellas on the site in the pool you know the it's got the whole four djs only thing okay. uh uh shield around I, I just been having such a hard time finding. i will acapella. give you any acapella you want just call me up and I'll hook you up. Nice. No worries. Thanks, That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Have I have I, have I disappointed you yet? Yeah, I had a request for one, and then he made his own mashup with it that night. <laughs> you know what? Thanks, Yo, uh, he 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 asked for use uh, my imagination. Uh, Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight and the Pips, yeah. and I was like, oh, this is fucking dope. I forgot about this, and I had to, I had to throw it behind like a Big Daddy Kane track. You know? Yeah. What'd you do? Warm it up, Kane. Uh, right? Yeah, I did yeah. it with Warm It Up, Kane. Yeah. It's pretty dope. <laughs> Shit. But yeah, it was great. So Yo, you guys, I need that. you guys both got memberships after this. Just uh, oh, man, wow. thank you. No, per permanent, it. you know what it is, man. I'm not, let me let me borrow. I appreciate this, this a lot. It, man. I do. No. Let me get some some shit. Off no, I'm glad myself. you came no, no, through. No, no. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm I mean, I'm gonna borrow Cookie's login. <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, oh, no, no, no. When I see you guys, I mean, I'm just looking at them. Oh, yeah, everybody yeah. in the room. No, I'm, I'm stealing cricket. You're, you're good too, bro. Okay, you're good. You're good. Don't just, believe me, man. Just give them those fucking sneakers. We're very generous. Just give me a pair of tens. Give me a pair of tens. We're good. <laughs> it's funny I got you, man. We the same size, man. I'm a ten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I ain't rolling you for those. They nah. gay, man. <laughs> 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 the funny thing is that. I'm just fucking you, man. 
Uh, Darren's been on Crick. He's always been talking about Crick and Clan since I started DJing. He's like, yo, you got to do this, you got to do that. I'm like, yo, it's $5 a, a track. No, it's not. It. Well, it was back then. Now right? it's $3 a track. Oh, Free yeah. to- I would tell him about but the But it's pack. not. No, it I isn't five dollars a track anymore anyway. It's mm-hmm. unlimited no. downloads for X amount of money. I don't want to speak about the money on on oh, here, yeah, but yeah, just yeah, yeah, go yeah, on yeah, the yeah, site yeah. www.crooklinclan.net. <laughs> <laughs> don't even lie, that was fucking good. <laughs> if you want to do more drops for us, we'll pay you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're you're right, overseeing that here in Vegas. Say that? You're overseeing the site here in Vegas. I'm just I oversee it wherever I live. Yeah. I could live anywhere I want uh-huh. because I'm I live from a computer. How much does that take to, like throughout your, your week or whatever? Mostly Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh-huh. from 8 a.m. to midnight. Really? All three days. Wow. I'm just around. I could still go out to the pool, get drunk, but you're smoke just, pot, do whatever what I want. The, but yeah. What I'm, is the hardest part of that? Is it dealing with the, co- the producers? No, it's dealing with uh, clients that speak different languages. So oh. we are all over the world. I'm about, like honestly, the United States is a small percentage at this point. Shit, we're killing yeah, it. In the Philippines, killing it, killing wow. it. In different countries, we're killing it. So, mm. you know, I mean, the world is so big. So when you say you're dealing with, the... I get so it's email only. So I get emails, one in Chinese, one in Japanese, one in a different language of Chinese, one in Korean. I'll call you when I get one. Um, <laughs> I got you in the Spanish if you want. Yo, one in Spanish, I'll call either yeah, one of y'all. You. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm getting them all. That's so, crazy. So yeah. I'm here. So on average, I'll get up on Thursday at 8 o'clock and there'll be maybe two emails in the box from two clients. And then they'll just go click, they click, come in. Click <laughs> like that, and it's like, and one's in Chinese, one's in Arabic. So I have Google Translate, Translate open right here, <laughs> uh-huh. which, mind you, you can insult the fuck out of someone using Google Translate because it gets it wrong a lot. So you got to, oh. like, write back and forth, write yeah. back and forth, and then paste what they wrote in and see it in English, and then go back, look at it in Spanish, then paste it from Spanish to English to see, right. You want to make sure what Google is giving you Cause I could just like fuck somebody off by mistake, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Not knowing, but so, just, <laughs> so they'll have a problem using the interface or how do I get my downloads that I bought last month? Simple questions, and I have like one click. So you handle all the customer service for now. Yeah. I can't, I can't handle it always, but because right. I, I stopped DJing, yeah, yeah, I was able to pick it up as a job. So I pick it up and I pay myself from the company. Can they also buy the shirt you're wearing, or no? Yes, you can buy the shirt, hats. We have a whole clothing store. Everything, you know. If I, plus, we have shit that's non-music related. Like, we have a shirt with Jackie Gleason in the moon on it. And it's fucking dope. I don't care what anybody says. It's dope. I wear that shirt. I get pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, that's the pitch to buy the shirt? Uh, yo, I got a shirt with the Goodfellas painting. With yeah, This yeah, guy's so like, what do you want from me? And yeah. one dog's looking that way. I, wear, I get pussy when I wear that shirt, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey. How hard is it to deal with the the producers or the lineup of DJs that you it's have? It's easy. It's easy? Because they're grateful to be there, mm-hmm. and they're good kids. And they're getting I don't, paid. Yeah. I don't fucking hire assholes. Well, now, how do you pay them if it's a subscription? PayPal, now? once a month. Is it? But is it a streaming base? Or when I, no, no streaming. It's download. All right, so I don't really want to. You don't have to. You don't have the to. The formula yeah, is yeah. a little extra, but yeah, yeah. to put it in a nutshell, it's like this. $100 comes in. $50 goes in the editor pot, $50 goes in the expenses and business pot. We pay for all the development and everything else, right. too, mm-hmm. So, which is 100000 just last year. So the 50% that's here is, let's say it's $50, right? $50 is equivalent to 100% of the editor pool. Now, all of the downloads that take place within a single month is considered 100% of the downloads. And you just split it. And now if, so let's say Starjack has 23% of the downloads, he gets 23% of the $50. Got it. Except it's not $50, obviously. That's pretty fair. It's very, very Very fair. fair. Yo, I know other pools pay guys $2,000 if they're really great and then fuck everyone else in the ass. I know, these guys come to me and they tell me, yeah, this guy said I can edit for him, but I can't get paid for the first year. I, I have to show that I'm good first. What the fuck wow. are you going to do for a year? How are you going to feed your family? Yeah. Yo, you shouldn't depend on Crooklyn Clan to feed your family unless you depend, unless you plan on putting the amount of time in that it takes to do that. And you have to be good. Is there ever, is there like a, is it just 
do you have like a, I need ten edits a month or I need this or that from you can buy people? credits. No, no, no. I'm saying from your. Oh yes, we have a, a quota and we have a max. You can't put over sixty edits in in a month. Into mm. into the audio vault. I don't want people. Have, have people try to do that. Put over sixty edits. Many times. Yeah. That's why I I created you you the, the technology under the hood of Crooklyn Clan yeah. is hundreds of because thousands if you of have, dollars. If you have of that many edits, wow, everyone's gonna about. kind of buy it or listen to it, right? Mm -hmm. What happens is people flood. So like yeah. if a guy knows, see new releases and shit like that tend to come. On the same days. I'm working on different strategies to get people to the sites on Monday through Wednesday, but usually Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, jammed. They almost shut our servers down a couple of times. They're just there shopping, 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 shopping. So when people put shit out on those days, in the new release section, it goes on the top. So these editors think they smart, and they'll wait until Thursday and then whoop, try to flood the new release section so that it's the first shit people listen to. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a J-Lo edit and you hear this catch J-Lo edit, you're satisfied for J-Lo edits. You might not hear the next one. You might not get to it if you're finished doing your shopping before you reach the next guy's J-Lo right. edit. Yeah. So you get what you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to manage that part of it. When, you know, the whole releasing and getting people, like I spend time. I spend How a lot. How many editors do you have? I got about 50 people working for me. Damn. But they do different sections. I have a mm. video store. We have strictly video. You do music videos. High quality, intense music mashup videos. Stuff that's amazing for VJs. They just use us like crazy. Video store does well. Shout to Brendan Ford. He runs the video store. Like he runs the quality control for yeah, me. He's one right. of my employees. So um, we have the Audio Vault, which is super high end mashups, bootlegs, you know, remixes, different stuff like that. And then we have the i12 inch digital pool. All three stores are in one store. Okay, the i12 inch digital pool is eight bar ins and outs, acapellas, instrumentals. Regular releases. Everything that the majors send standards, me. All yeah. the major uh -huh. labels give me all the music and it all goes right into the pool, mm -hmm. to the DJs. And the DJs pick it up. Sometimes uh, we'll give away free stuff in the pool. If we're really trying to help a label push a, a record, we'll give it away for free and push it out to the front page. You know, we, we create situations with the with people that could yell at us if they want to and they don't. So mm -hmm. it, the, the whole balance of it all is, it requires a lot of thinking and, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. but. It's a lot of logistics. It is. Yeah. It, it, oh, yeah. We have 12 years of data too. So 12 years of data, yeah. right down to where, what location people are downloading the track in. Right. You know what I mean? We try to cut a deal with Serato. We try yeah. to cut a couple of deals, but they're, they're, they worry about the legality situation mm -hmm. of a record pool. You know what I mean? But then they tried something terrible like that thing they plugged into Serato. What was that thing? That's, I don't even know. Clip they kit? they no have way. something plugged into Serato where you stream. So we have something called no. Cloud Crates now, okay? But we don't, it's not available to the public yet because we're trying to cut a multi million dollar deal to put Cloud Crates into wait, wait, Record wait. Box break, and, and those break, things. Break down the concept of this Cloud Cloud, cloud crates. crates is simple. As music comes out, well, it gets really deep, but I'll, I'll give you the... Give me as a, as the music comes out, <laughs> basically <laughs> you have the Crooklyn Clan vault in your Serato at all times. And you all, you need is, all you need is an internet connection. So the music... You always have it. You'll always be able to flip any song over from the crates you create in our website, and then we create smart crates for you. So in other words, somebody can hire you. Say Crooked was a Crooklyn Clan editor, right? Uh -huh. And they're sweating you. You have a fan base. 20 guys could subscribe to DJ Crooked and you could be creating weekly sets for these DJs to play. And that's just gonna pop up in their Serato in the order you put it in. And then people would pay for this. Big time, big time. Wow. I'm not even fucking with you, big time. Like, wow. I'm saying $50 a so week. I could be, you can make $50 a week from one guy. And I could create their crate. and they could you, be All you have to do is they have to believe that you're that dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you got fans Holy like shit. that, yo, yeah, we are man. doing... Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. <laughs> this sounds crazy. It's pretty crazy. So I let's say someone's like, yo, I love the way Crooked DJs. 
I want I want him to create my set every week. Every week. If you're part of my system, you would be creating the set every week for everyone. Some dude You're in, only creating one set though. Okay, so so some dude in West Bubble. Malaysia, Fuck, Africa, Spain, like, Japan. I'm gonna do this set and each I'm just one, gonna follow this. They're down all the, subscribers of yours. So then we'd get fifty percent and you'd get fifty percent. As long as they so, have Wi Fi. Right. And as long as they have Wi Fi They're doing my set that I like a playlist. In seven months. Worldwide Wi-Fi comes. This is just one Wi-Fi system that goes up in the sky. It comes off of, off of um, a satellite and just gives everybody Wi-Fi. Oh, it's supposed to be like seven months, so we'll see. Shit like that gets delayed once in a while, but that's coming. Okay, I knew about that two years ago when we built the technology to do this. What I'm telling you now. But we haven't implemented the technology because we don't want to waste the technology on just Crooklyn Clan. We want to get it into Serato. We want to get it into Record Box. You know, I'm friends with Lars from uh, you know Lars Shitling from um, from Pioneer. No, he's no. the head HNIC. Of, on he decides what new products come out. Okay. This is a good guy to know. Trust me when I tell you. Yeah, we you. need headphones here. Yeah, I, I mean, but yo, honestly, <laughs> don't. Just a the park. He's not a good guy to know to go begging for shit, but he's a good guy to know if you have an idea that you think is game changing. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to do it better than Pioneer? There isn't a single mm. company. Right, Rain, yeah. respect to Rain. They don't make shit like Pioneer, bro. Pioneer is next level. It's clean and mm -hmm. well put together equipment. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I want these guys to embrace this. And that's that's really what it, it is for me in terms of the cloud crates. Eventually, if they don't, my next move is to go at their necks. If you don't, if you ain't with me, you're against me. So I'm going to create a DJ software that's going to be better than all the DJ softwares. Why? Because I'm a DJ, and I know I know they were DJs too. But there was a lot of iterations, and that's, DJs, that's a lot though it, to create a young that's soft what DJ you software. think. Yeah. Yeah. I, go look at the new Crooklyn and see what it does. Look at the filtering capabilities and the options and the things that you can do on it today. And you'll see what a couple hundred thousand can do in development. So what, what can a million do? I can get investors up to about $5 million in a week, probably. All I got to do is put the word out that we're trying to create the next big, you know what I mean, and yeah. talk to the few people that I know that have money, and they'll be like, all right, I'll take a piece of that. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Even Riz himself would invest in it. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the money man. I'm poor. I, I, I got to too many bad relationships. <laughs> and I got mad kids, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, though. But, I mean, think about it, you know? I mean, it sounds crazy, yo. You can't just think about shit. You got to get up and do it. And yeah, that's yeah. what you guys did right here. You know, you mm -hmm. see? You were like, yo, let's make this pipe. This ain't even a pipe. It's next level. It's like a fucking movie studio. You got a picture, <laughs> a picture room on the other side. You got a clothing store in the front. Shit, I can move in here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yo, so, oh, man, Cloud Cray, you kind of fucked my head up, but damn, man. Yeah, just need an internet connection. I mean, in most places, you, you have a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? I mean... Should be easy. Oh my God, I don't have this. Boom. Just type it in your Serato and our crates will find it. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Shit, wow. That's a next level. Fuck. It is next level. It, uh, is. it really, it's it's really been thought of for a long time already. It's just nobody's doing anything about it. I remember someone talking to me about. Uh, Pulse Locker. That's what they had. What is that? Y'all never heard of Pulse Locker? No. I, remember, no. I heard that. That's somewhere. amazing that they never even heard of Pulse, Pulse Locker. I heard, have you? I heard Ding. about that somewhere. No. Nah. So no, Pulse Locker Serato is in Serato. Yeah. You can go into Serato, mm -hmm. and it's a service that you pay for monthly that allows you access to their music, just like I'm telling you. And this came out long after we invented it. It came out around, you know, like Serato went with this, but it's a fail. Why is it a fail? Because nobody wants what they have to offer. They're not making anything DJs want to play. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, a wedding guy might be looking for Billy Jean. If he is, he shouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be doing a fucking wedding if you don't have the music you need to do a wedding. <laughs> you should be looking for your oddities and stuff like that or whatever. Right. But see, us, we'll give you 20 mashups of Billy Jean, 40 different versions of intros, outros. Oh, you need an acapella out right now? Boom. I want to do an acapella out of Billy Jean with this next beat right now. I feel like doing that shit now. You get in there and you do it now. You can set the crates up in your crib before you get to the gig. So my qu my question is this: Do you do you think that us actually carrying MP3s in our laptop is going to be 
obsolete? Not for a while. It won't be for a while, but it will be eventually. To the point where, like, you know how we stream on our phones with, you know, yeah. I, Apple? Like, it's going to be the thing where we don't have libraries anymore. Streaming. But the, all the music is just up in the air and we're it just It won't just it. be up in the air. It'll be in a service like I'm talking You know about. I mean? That's or what I mean. it'll be in your house. It'll be in your house. They'll be. It'll be your music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People can do that now. You can do this right now. You can put uh, Western Digital Drive in your house and then log into it from right. your computer and have the drive mount on your desktop. When the drive mounts on your desktop, if it has a Serato folder in it, Serato will list the crates that are in it. So literally, you can have but you music. you need a Wi-Fi connection. Just need Wi-Fi. Right. Right. So you'll, you can literally list the music that you have in your crib on your major hard drive that you don't want to carry with you in a, in a laptop on a little virtual drive on your computer. You know Serato. Once you plug a chip in and Serato sees a crate, a Serato crate on anything, a drive, a chip, it automatically loads the crates. Yeah. If you have that on that virtual drive, it's going to do the same thing. So all of these dudes with external drives that they have plugged in, they don't need that. They just I mean, need they it. need it for now. <laughs> <laughs> Screw them. It's Screw scary. Them. <laughs> Our dudes go out with 300 meg. Giga trillion bytes of fucking music. The hell are you gonna do with all that music? Man? That's crazy. I got uh, one crate so yeah. says this must be played in the club, and these are the songs that I put in that crate when I go out and DJ that people are looking for today. Yeah, and then this is the box. These are shits that I might want to play in the club, and here's a box that says if I really want to go nuts, I'll play in here, and I keep it real simple. You keep it simple, bro. It's easy. So you don't you don't get a you don't get an itch to get to get back once in a while once in a while once in a while yeah but I want I'm not coming back for five hundred bucks yeah yeah no can do how's it how's it been uh, you've been going out pretty I, mean, I love been it going here. hard yeah I love it you've been going hard in the paint out here. <laughs> yeah I'm doing yeah. it yeah, yeah. I'm doing we, it. we need to <laughs> we need to hang out yeah who's that yeah. new dude I'm who? making out bitches bro yeah. 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 Make, I ask make out first ask questions later yeah. some bitch put a piece of broccoli in my mouth oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, it must have came right out of a tooth. <laughs> Ooh, like, lunch. The fuck is that? I didn't eat broccoli tonight. No, I'm okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Yo, he's like the new Don Johnson right now. He's just going everywhere. He's gonna have his fucking intro. And have I'm class. having fun, man. Yeah, Vegas yeah. is fun, bro. Yeah, it's I a saw, lot of fun. I, I, compared to New York, compared to where you were now, twenty stars. There isn't a place on stars. earth like this, bro. Wow, a, a what about the what about the, music? the closest thing? What about the music selection and everything that you're hearing out? Yeah, uh, you, you, direct, Eddie. I only have a few that I like. You know what I'm saying? But just I in general of the the type of Vegas, you know. Well, the way you play and the way direct plays is the way a club is supposed to sound. In my well, it's opinion. a New York style. Yeah, yeah. And that's just see. I don't like guys that use eight bar intro on everything. That's just annoying. If you don't know how to slam records and get the whoa out of the crowd, you ain't a DJ. I want the whoa. I'm not trying to give away what I'm about to drop. I'll do, do, do what you ready, boom, and hit motherfuckers and the whole room gets lit. That's the that's the energy I'm used to from New York. But there's a lot of you records know? that are getting made that don't have that whoa if you were to drop it in that. That people play like, because they're yeah. also mandatory bottle popping. Right. Yeah, I call right, them right, bottle right. popping yeah, yeah, yeah. records. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you get your bottle popping and I don't give a fuck. I want to hear that. Oh, I'm spending 3000 on right. one bottle like a loser. Right. Yeah. I got to hear this. I'm like, I didn't pay for my bottle. I'm drinking Crooked's bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Crooked's bottle. Crooked, crooked's. <laughs> so I, how do you feel about the new Crap. music now? I like it. You do. Honestly, bro, I'm not that old guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. not that. This, these old dudes get me mad. I'd be having arguments with them. You ask me, Drake is one of the top five ever. That's my opinion. Wow. I, I hate to insult anybody. I fuck with Lord, Fina uh, Lord Finesse. I fuck with Big Al. I fuck with everyone y'all fuck with. Mm -hmm. I know everybody. But I'm telling you, in terms of carrying a motherfucking torch and knowing how to deliver in so many different ways yeah. and just lyrically on point and snide and dope with the shit he says, he's fucking amazing, bro. I haven't, I haven't seen an artist like him. There's been very few, man. Very few. So, yeah, I love new music. I love it. I mean, some of it's whack, but, you know, I like it. I like 21 Savage. I like shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. shit. I like so, it. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie hates the Eddie new Eddie hates the new music. Eddie, old guy. Eddie hates I all the new hip-hop. Yo, I hate so, a lot of it, but I, I actually, I do agree with, with Sizz on Drake. I just don't like a lot of Drake's beats. I think they're so... And I think 40's dope. I think, I think if, yeah, he, made, if he made more, like, dope. records like The Motto, I'd be... 
more Darren. The motto is up Eddie's alley. That's why the motto feels like came out. It feels like a fucking tribe called Quest record. I mix I mix the motto with uh with um. Boom, dun, 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 bam, bam, bam. Check it out yeah. now. Uh, oh, what's vibrant that thing? Vibrant yeah, vibrant, vibrant thing. thing. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Because it's perfect for it. <laughs> boom, sh- boom, no, he's got a, he's got a dun, lot of records dun, that you know? I like, but it's just like the, a lot of the slow. Yeah, a lot of the. Slow, I, th- I think that in my feelings is just soft. I, I think it's boring. It's <laughs> but I get it. I see why it blew up. It's bouncing. I see why it blew up. It's clear as clear as a bell. Why it blew up? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Mob ties is my favorite on it. I play it all the time. Mob ties is my favorite. I got an acapella. Boom. A word. Yeah. I think this, this, <laughs> the streaming platform is affecting the music we're hearing because it's becoming less refined and it's becoming like less uh, conceptual where it's more like, let's just put it out there. Like, we got nothing to lose. We just put it out there. Like, it's either going to do well or it's not going to do well. Because there's no filtration system. It's not like, oh, we got to invest this much money into it. You could just... Literally make music, put it out, and just post it up. And they're like, oh, it didn't do well. Fuck it. We'll do the next one. And the cost is so much the less. There's no, there's no pressing. Yeah. There's no, pre- there's no the problem. production of the actual tangible yeah. music. You know? That's what ruins the whole industry. It affects yeah. the whole yeah. industry. But we're actually right. hearing it affect the music more, I feel like, this year than ever. We're and like, it will be know. next year even worse because it's so easy to make music. There's a bedroom producer every two yeah, blocks. Yeah. It's the easier it gets to do something, the less value it has. When we were DJs carrying right. crates, motherfuckers didn't want to carry crates. Right. They didn't want have, want to go out and buy records. Now everyone became a DJ in the digital era, so DJing lost its value. You well, know, you ever just you, like anything. You yeah. ever heard that True. conversation? Uh, what do you call it that they had? With um with Drake and Forty when they were making uh when they were making the uh, Scorpion album, the the conversation that Premier had with them DJ Premier because he produced see, uh, what was the he produced the, I never heard that yeah he produced a couple tracks on yeah. there, so um they sent Premier a couple tracks Premier reached out to Forty and was like look uh you know my homie said to hit you up you, y'all might be looking for producers Forty was like yes we are uh. I'll, I'll send you some stuff that we want sampled. That's dope. Sent them all the shit that they wanted sampled. I, I you know, he got me feeling emotions and all that, whatever shit. Did he do that one, right? I think Emotion. so, yeah. He yeah, only so, did two, right? Yeah. yeah. He did another one with Rick Ross, but it didn't make the album. Oh, so, Rick Ross yeah. was on a Drake record? Yeah, it was Rick Ross, and he did it, but it didn't make the album. But he was saying that when he spoke to 40, he said, well, when do you need this song? Because I heard you guys are releasing in July. He's like, dude, we're gonna be working up to the release, so just send it. And I, I thought that was crazy that they would get a song that day and just potentially put it on an album. Yeah. And in the fact that it would be in a twelve-hour period, you know or six-hour period, or four-hour period, that would be unheard of back wow. in the days. Because Drake can also write super fast. And then, you know, like, I think they did Nice For What in, like, an hour and a half Future, or 45 minutes. Future wow. and Drake's album was one week of them hanging out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was. Exactly. Sounded like yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, no, you it, was, know what? it was good. It was good. It, it did have the dirty sound to it, but it felt to me like a Wu-Tang album, I, I broke that record. I liked it. I broke I really that record it, over man. my knee. I had uh, somebody, um, one of the guys from One Direction came in uh, and uh, asked, uh, somebody asked if they could look through the records. I said, no. And oh, but this is in One Direction. I said, said no. I, don't I said me I said meeting. No. I said me meeting a kid from One Direction is like me introducing my mother, my grandmother to Tony Hawk. Like it means nothing to them. Like you know. So, <laughs> so they. Fa- so I said. I said, listen, don't touch any of my shit. You could look through the the stuff that belongs to the club. And they found they found uh, a future record, the future Drake record I had hidden. <laughs> and they said, oh, look, you got Future right here. We were asking for this. I said, and I broke it over my knee in front of you him. You had vinyl Threw it in the it? garbage and spit on it. I said, it's not going to play well. <laughs> yeah. You Damn. didn't do that. Fuck. You didn't do that. Oh, he's, yeah. Yo, he's oh, the yeah. devil. I believe you kidding me? He's I bad. Believe that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The girl that came and asked The kid's for looking request. at me like, <laughs> and then the kid from One Direction is like, dude, he's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you mad. I said, I'm not mad. <laughs> I, said, I said I'm not mad at all I don't want to talk politics Because no, 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 it doesn't no. control my life mm-hmm. It doesn't I watch it because it's in my face 24 hours a day The minute you get on social media One guy hates Trump The other guy loves Trump mm-hmm. This guy hates that It's just in my face I fucks with music You want to make some beats? Let's make some beats You want to spit on something? I'll even rap with you if you want You know, I'm about peace, man But I just feel the way I feel about my presidential choice was made from logic. 
and that's just how I feel. It's my logic, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think people should have the right to have an abortion if they want. And that's not a Republican thought that's process. Liberal. Yeah, that's liberal. I feel like they should. I don't think it should be crazy out of hand where people are killing babies that are five months old in their stomach. But you, to a degree, I think women should have the right to have an abortion. If you think you're going to bring a child in this world and you can't provide the right way for it, right. by all means, don't. Do the child a favor and yourself a favor. Yeah, it's when you start using it as repetitive, like form of birth control. Right. That's not. That's that's the crime. That's and, what the Republicans yeah, right. get upset about or whatever. Yeah. For me, I'm pretty much on the line, but I go for the business aspect of everything. The United States is a business, and it's not a very lucrative one right now. Well, mm -hmm. it's becoming one again. We need more jobs here. We need more things going on here. Once you take care of here, like I said, then you can take care of here. Then you spread it out and you get it bigger. You ever play Risk? It's a board game. I've heard about it. You ever play? I've heard of it. I never okay, played it's an old school board game. It's the one with the mouse. No, it's a map. It's a map. <laughs> yeah, you've oh, it's a map of the you. world. Yeah. It's a map of the world. Oh no, I thought it was the thing that you. you it's a map of the world, that's and everybody. That's operation. So the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> You oh no, that's I trouble. thought it was Battleship. Trouble. He was that's that's trouble. <laughs> fucking Candyland. <laughs> you sank my battleship. Yeah, yeah. Scissor, scissor, please don't explain risk to us right now. Yeah. I mean, but it, it's, it's I, don't want. I won't do it, but it does it does sum up what Donald Trump is doing pretty much. So okay. I'll tell you another time. On another note, how did you come up with the name Scissor Hands? Uh, a rapper. I was working with a rapper before uh Riz. Before me and Riz got together, I was making beats for an un underground rapper from my neighborhood, uh, Zombie. He, they actually got a dope tattoo spot in Brooklyn now. Him and Firstborn from Young Black Teenagers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They open up, um, they're called Ringleaders, Ringleaders Tattoos. And uh, so this was my first rapper ever. And um, I had the machine, I was making him underground hip hop beats. And mm -hmm. the movie Edward Scissorhands had, came, had come out and uh, I could scratch. Yeah, yeah. I, I could still scratch pretty decent for a 45-year-old guy, you know? I don't, I'm not whack, but I'm not, you know, I'm not Cuba. But, da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so he was like, yo, and my name's Ed. So he was like, Edward Scissorhands. I was like, all right, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> and then I just changed the spelling. I, you know, I got more into it from a professional standpoint. How do I market. trademark it and shit? And so I did it. Like it's that. funny because when when I heard Scissorhands and we, we would, when I was, Growing up or coming up, like we just always knew, like known of you to like scratch, be like an insane scratcher. But, but I, we we've never heard you scratch. An insane scratcher back then versus now is quite different. I was I was good at scratching, but yeah. not like Riz was the backspinning guy. You know, he used to do all this shit. It's, mm -hmm. For me, it was always just I was a one arm bandit. You know what I'm saying? I would get in there and I'll tear a fucking record apart. Like I caught like like Revolution style, like how Revolution. You met, you know Rev? I've, I've heard of him. I've never Rev is a, I've heard of him, yeah. Rev is like a very perfect version of me. I'm like a sloppy version of him. You know what I mean? Like where I cut. If you ever listen to him, you'll understand. And that's all, always my thing was always timing and staying in time and trying to be on. Like I'm a quantized kind of guy. You well, know? Let's see. I want to see it live. I'll cut with you. Why come to the crib, dude? I'm a horrible scratcher. You know, I'm uh, it horrible. doesn't matter. You're a club rocker. Yeah, I'm just a club rocker. That's, that's, all, all, that's all you really need to be. That's real. How, how about you? You cut? Man. I don't want to cut, man. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just rock the party. That's it. Rock the party. Hit the microphone. Y'all do it, man. You get it right. Definitely. Man, shit. I'm a fan. I want ready to be a fan of no, yours. I've always been a fan of his, man. Uh, so. Definitely. Yeah. What about uh, Crooklyn Clan? Just, I mean, it's kind of. Crooklyn Clan, we made up in Mike Weiss's office on the fly. Me and Riz. Like, uh, what do you want to call yourselves, guys? Mike Weiss said. So I'm like, I don't know. Crooklyn. And Riz is like, Crooklyn Clan, because Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. <laughs> it was so gay, but it stuck. <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> it's it stuck. It stuck. <laughs> you know, it did. It did. It stuck. So we, we kept it. In How often do you talk to Riz? Pretty often? Uh, twice, three times a week. He just got married, right? No. Not, not? Soon. He's going to get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, Riz is the smartest person on earth. Riz had a girlfriend 25 years ago. I just got to tell you guys this. And, she drove him crazy. You know, like how a girlfriend drives you crazy. You're in the clubs playing records. The girl don't want you in the club bitching about this girl and that girl near mm -hmm. you. Why was that girl standing there in the booth? Got rid of her. Didn't have another girlfriend for 20 years. <laughs> 20 fucking years girlfriendless. Wow. He just didn't. He stacked, stack, stack. Me, one problem after the next. After I had a baby with a Playboy Playmate that fucking, I can give you 2,750 reasons 
a month why you shouldn't have a baby with a play. 2,700. <laughs> and 50 uh, reasons 50. why a month. I remember you dating that. Courtney, play Courtney Culkin. I oh, can say her shit. name. I love her. We're friends. She still beats me over the head and takes me to court when she gets mad at me. But she's an awesome girl. Great mom. She gets the job done. My son is handsome as hell. Was He's, that was that like the MySpace era? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was, I was that's, who's, that's, Brand, that's Brandon's? No, that, that's no Brandon's not. 25. Oh, Courtney Brandon. is about five years older than Brandon. So that I remember, was, I that remember was, like pictures of you in the Playboy uh, play me and yeah. we just like so I had a kid with her this motherfucker my man you know what I did <laughs> yo I had I had like a, an insane amount of money saved and I went and I bought a fucking house in, in Long Island with her and I bought her a house with a pool it looked like the fucking Hamptons my house it was retarded it was so sick was dumb expensive and I tried to give her everything and we were both just too young to be in a situation. Like I was still flying here and playing in Tangerine at the time. Right. And at uh, Revolution, the Beatles bar. Mm -hmm. So, oh, sure. you know, yeah. I'm like fucking back and forth and you know, she gets pregnant. Now she's a Playboy playmate with a belly and I'm still traveling. It drove her nuts, you know? She didn't mm -hmm. want, we were just too young, man. We were too young and it was a bad decision. I think if we would've got together now, it would've worked out because she's, she's m much more mature now, but it was rough. It yeah, was, yeah. And it cost me a great deal of money. I'm a broke motherfucker. Between that and my bill, like my month, my rent in Summerlin is 3,300 a month. It's retarded how much How big is your house? Yeah. It's 2,200 square feet, two bedroom with a loft. It's a, an apartment, not a loft, not oh, a house. Okay. So it's nice, though. I got a sick studio. You guys come. <laughs> I live by summer. Man. That's pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> come, come visit me, man. We can do some scratches, whatever. Get together. But um, I like the barbecue. So if you like to eat barbecue, yeah. we just can't invite him. Scumbag. <laughs> Labor, can't invite him. Labor Day's coming up. Labor oh, Day's yeah, coming yeah. up. Hey, I got a question. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. I, I see Crooked got the evil look in his face. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you're, you're vegetarian or vegan? Vegan. You're vegan. Yep. When did you become vegan? November 29th of 2011 was my last time eating meat. I was in London. 2011? 2011, yeah. So Amazing. November 29th will be Amazing. seven years vegan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, cause I remember when, cause Anthony Bourdain passed. Yeah, follow. Oh, so you remember when I was saying yeah, that he, was he wasn't a good off. man, and and yeah, I didn't like wish him. death on no, him, but I'm not Eddie gonna fucking lose sleep. Off. Well, I mean, it's not normal behavior for a man to smear deer blood all over his face and get a kick out of it, and eat beating hearts from snakes. Yeah, that's and disgusting. Ripping intestines out of animals while they're still alive. It's not normal behavior. Nobody is saying it's that eating up. meat is bad inherently. But when you take such joy in Butchery. another sentient creature's suffering, then I have to. Then I'll fucking speak out. I'm and close. I, and he man. was. I'm he close. was. <laughs> he was not a. He was not. He might have. He might have done great acts, but when you see stuff like that, that's not. Those aren't the actions of yeah. a good man like, or, or, or a. Or a sane are you man. a vegan? For, for for ethics. For ethics. Yeah. When did you, what, what made you, be, what made you? Well, like I said, I was in London, and uh, I did the direct flight. I think it's into uh, Gatwick, I think. I did a direct flight on yeah. Virgin. So I had the same flight back, and I did the whole thing in London. Me and Milo met up out he there. He told me the story. I was we do, boom, Sunday roast, fish and chips. We went out for a curry, which in London they said, okay, you've done all this other stuff, but tonight, we, which was my last night in London, we're going to have the most traditional English dinner, which is Indian food. That's what yeah. they vibe on mm -hmm. out there. And that's what we did. And I'm fucking shoveling chickens and God knows what else into my mouth. And then I'm, now I'm on the flight. I got a 10-hour flight back to Vegas. And I'm missing my dogs, my cats, my birds. And I made this connection like, wait. I said, why, why do I love those but fuck every, every, every other one? I just ate 30 birds, but I have a parrot and a fucking conure in my fucking house. I said, why you don't I have a zoo have... in your house? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm zooed like fucking, up. I'm, yeah. I've caught, I've caught so Eddie on the phone. By the time I, so by the time I landed, I never <laughs> ate it again. I was still, I, I actually did do dairy for probably a couple of weeks until I just said, that's even worse than the fucking meat. There's wow. more so cruelty it's, in it's the dairy. It's literally industry. because you made a connection that's to it. all the food. I, I you wasn't going to eat fucking and it was animals delicious. that claim to be an animal lover. It, just, and was, it, it was like equate. an amazing meal? What? The last the, time the I curry. ate yeah. it? Yeah. It was all right. I was drunk. I was fucking, I was drinking Indian And then you just made that fucking... connection. I miss my animals and shit. I, I just said, ate why, a bunch of animals. Why do I pick and choose which animals I should have respect for their lives? And I said, I'm not going to do it. So no matter what your intentions are, if your intentions are dietary and health conscious behavior that you want to make some tweaks with your with your diet, yeah. the bonus to that is 
more animals will live because you're not eating them anymore. If you want to save the animals and if you want to go vegan for the animals, then the as long as you're attacking and approaching the diet the right way, then your bonus is going to be health benefits. You're right. going to lose some weight. You're going to have great energy and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a win-win no matter what your motivating factors are. Trump is a vegan, right? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he made, yeah. There's Trump, the Trump steaks were made out of fucking tofu, I guess. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, well, that's what well, you know, and that that was that was my only. I don't follow politics at all anymore. I won't turn on the news now since I'm last November. I'm over it. And I don't want to go back into politics, but you know, I, you know, I, I know some vegans that are Trump supporters, and I, I never, I never realized that that could they can coexist because of course that can coexist yeah but can they really because every bit of legislation he puts out when it I comes mean, to animals does atrocities towards animals you will animals. dig down deep into anything so, enough and you'll find something wrong with it that's just the no, way well, that's yeah, the I'm liberal not, I'm mindset a, bro in a nutshell it really is you will look yeah, but deep if somebody enough into feels some, you find but something but he's actually putting laws into into effect that are torture and just make the plight of the, the animals even worse the than problem. it was. That's the problem. That and when I he's reaching it. out mm. to the dentist that shot that Cecil the lion, when all the fucking the whole world was enraged about one lion, yeah. but fucking the fifty-seven billion land animals that die because we want to entertain yeah, ourselves. They, they're also created to die. Like they. No, make, see, they well, that's them. that's the shitty like that's the Christian wor- yeah. like fucking. Republican, like God gave man dominion, excuse that everybody uses. I know that's that, not I'm not using case. it. I'm not. I don't. No, even I know, like but it. that's what people think, and it's it, they're not here for our pleasure. I mean, when you're when they're mass produced, produced, you, that's the intention. They're not mass producing so we can have a, a you uh, know uh, have 40, nice cows 40, cows running around my farm. <laughs> it, you know, it's to fucking profit off of their absolute fucking torture. It and is. It's, it's terrible. Nothing, it's lifelong torture. I mean, and it's I, I won't fucking. I won't ever ever go back to fucking supporting anything and that goes and it's not preferential treatment of animals over human beings it's you're against fucking exploitation period you're against abuse torture killing pain killing Mm -hmm. of any fucking species that feels pain which do not include plants for anybody that's going to say well plants feel pain if you can find a way to say that in 20 seconds to the person who's requesting music to you Oh Christ! They'll just, they'll just cry and I walk did. away. Well, they'll they'll cry and walk alone. away anyway. But you know, <laughs> depends on if I want to do Bless, some outreach. Do I smell meat in your breath? Yeah. That's what she used to tell me. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a burger? Did you <laughs> just have a beef burrito? Oh my fucking... god! Next time you request a fucking song, I better smell kale coming off those fucking <laughs> blowjob lips. Yo. You fucking pig! That's right. You yeah, that whole shit pig just, just made me feel bad because I hung out with Eddie like not long ago. Went to go eat, and I ate a chicken sandwich in front of him. I'm not that dude. I'm not gonna. Uh, he'll let you eat. He'll let you. <laughs> I'm not that dude. You but know, then he I mean, told me, I take people know how I spot. feel. And you know what? I, 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 listen, I ate, I ate meat for 36 years, 34 years. So who the fuck am I to fucking judge anybody? I, I had my own fucking awakening and my own kind of evolution when it, came, when it comes to that stuff. And nobody's to say that you might not have it one day or you might not. He's so, Cizans is so open to it. He's not I'm there. I'm so close. I, I eat took him vegan to, food. I took I'm him close, to, man. I took him to Violet's. He's yeah, he not wanted, the socks he off, wanted to take me He's to so the open to spot. it. Mm-hmm. And he gets it. And, like, you know, even on I, Facebook, I love when animals, I was on Facebook, we used animals. to have a lot of back and forths. And he's like, Eddie, between me and fucking Landry, with Chris Land, what's it up, was Chris? T- I stopped posting food. Just- I posted food like everyone else. I was mm-hmm. a foodie, yeah. and out of respect for him and Chris Landry and Jamie Lee, mm-hmm. another girl that is an she's uh, awesome. she, she is hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. I just stopped posting food. I said I'm not going to upset these people. Yeah, if I have to eat this shit, I'm going to do it behind their back. And that's it. Which you, know, but if you don't have to do that either. But but you scissors also said like you know I you know we would have like three four hour conversations he, before. because it's true. I looked at pigs in. Can, Bro, the shit that I've seen that these motherfuckers forced me to look at, it was like little containments with pig bodies upside down. They're alive, squealing and screaming. Yeah. These motherfucking things. You punch one, it hurts. Right. You poke it, it feels it. Yeah. It's alive, man. It's a gest- gestation crate, it's called. So they're not allowed to turn around. Yeah, they're just, just stuck on in one side. position. They're screaming. It's, it's lifelong torture. Yeah. Imagine yeah. Some, yeah. something big coming here and putting you in something like that. And and pigs have a... a, a I've been in pretty small DJ booths. than dogs, you know, but I've everybody been small. embraces <laughs> dogs. And gives the, light DJ booth was, <laughs> the light DJ booth was... The light DJ booth was What about small. Flo? Oh, number that, was a, yeah, that was a gestation oh, yeah, booth. Where you climbed up the stairs in that DJ booth? Those are the worst. Oh, my God. Fire escapes? 
Those fire escapes. I hated were, that Like shit. you needed a pulley Brutal. system to bring your records up. The flow was the worst. You could fall out of that booth anymore. What about um? You wow. ever go? You ever do the Palladium in New Rochelle? No. You remember that place? No, I never did it. Yeah, that was that's A-Lo- the place A-Lo's I left Jet Lounge to do. Yeah, yeah. A-Lo, 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 right around from Deep, and then they opened yeah. Deep. Yeah, in. yeah, I remember that. I but did. Deep was home. Ohm was deep. After it was no, no, Ohm. I thought, no, no. Ohm no. became Discotheque at one point. No. No, it didn't. Discotheque was no. down the block from right. Ohm. Discotheque. It was, was around the corner. Right. What was Discotheque it, before then? No, Discotheque was a junkie after hours club that Eddie Dean owned. Oh, Eddie Dean owned this. Eddie, Discotheque? Eddie Dean owned Discotheque. Jermaine used to Eddie do the Dean door Eddie Dean later became the owner yeah. of Pasha. Eddie Dean's the owner of Pasha. And, and now Schmansky's. Yeah. And now, now Schmansky's. So Eddie Dean owned discotheque. Wait, that was, was my. The, I used to go there for half hours all the time, bro. It was nuts that place. Was it, it was in Midtown? It was twenty second between, between deep, fifth and sixth. I swear to God, it was deep. Twenty second That's between fifth and sixth. Ohm. Yeah, I don't remember. You definitely the exact know address. Ohm. It was on the corner of the parking lot. That oh, big first place I ever did ecstasy. First place I ever did side. special was K. Was it Metronome? No, it was Ohm. That was a Metronome. O H M. Oh yeah, right. You remember Ohm? Yeah, I mean, I, did a, I did a party. I, did, I used um, to. I used to do. I have a. What is, is it? Is I did it Tyler a, Banks' birthday party. At home. Is it? What is it? Nice. Yeah. I don't did know. Did you get to meet him? I did meet him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. Is she taller than you? Yeah. I would have just. <laughs> <laughs> I would have got my <laughs> slurp on, bro. <laughs> Yo. She I'm, gave me. She gave me question. Mob deep. Oh, no wow. that's awesome. Because um, Quiet Storm was popping at the time. Uh, she's like, Yo, do you keep playing that song. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, that place oh, was great. Ohm right. was fucking awesome. Oh, that was my first. That, that was literally. That's where I met Johnny Vicious. Then, that's deep, where we, then you know. when it was deep is when Johnny and everyone was playing. No, 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 no. A- no AM no, no, came there later. Right. Later, no, no. But AM was also promoting Ohm. AM bought Johnny, and Johnny was doing Ohm so was on AM? Thursday. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I'm talking about AM. A love, A love, A love. I'm talking about AM. Right, 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 right. But but Johnny was playing there when A love was promoting. It was pa- Paris would be at the door. Dean, Dean and Rachel from Red Door, who Dean passed away mm-hmm. a few years ago. Uh, Lord G was downstairs doing house on Thursdays. Johnny was in the main room, and uh, and it was amazing, man. It was just when I was at home. Sebastian Tory did the main floor, and I did the hip hop basement. That was that was the run there. The basement was, was great. You had a Yuri two years. there too, right? I was there for two years. And they it had the great. Yuri when you were playing. You were playing off the yeah, Yuri. Yeah, with Louis Passion. You remember Louis Passion? I remember oh Justin De La Vega was there. He was one of Louis the Louis Passion sound- was the gay Spanish guy. You don't like the way I do this. <laughs> Why don't you look at how I do this? <laughs> Yo, he was he was oh, fucking he right was right one right of a kind, bro. Why do I? I would, and he used to always every time he did a mix. <laughs> he was like that guy from Tomorrow, Bro, Tomorrowland. He would stick the guy his that hand out, and if you didn't pound him up, he uh. would give you a hard time. The rest, man, I try to give you a pound. Did you see this guy, by the way, from from that Tomorrow? What is it, Tomorrow World or Tomorrowland? The fest, the big EDM festival in in the yeah. Netherlands or whatever. Oh, and the they had this Italian dancing, dude. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's humping the speakers. He's yeah. licking the. You must send me that. And then he's got a clip. You must not. He's got a clip from another one. He go and he's playing this like little loop of like some key. Some key line, do, 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 do. and he's just waiting to say something, and all of a sudden he goes, "I want you to relax your anus." <laughs> Literally, <laughs> and then they pan to a girl in the fucking crowd, and she puts this look on her face, like, "What the fuck did he just say?" <laughs> it's crazy. the funniest thing in the world. But and he, yeah, of course he's going to be a fucking his Vegas residency should be here in about six months. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! What is it? Not, am I wrong? They're going to fucking be all over that motherfucker. <laughs> I'm still know. waiting for that dickhead Wade Martin to get his residency. That you see all his billboards, billboards. all over sign. Yeah. What is, whoa! What a fucking. Oh wait, 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 wait! The, the, in Dude, that's been... It's still up? Yeah, oh wait, all over. Every time I go to fucking yeah, so Yard House at Town Square, I got to look at that fucking... Yeah, they're ready for Yard House right now. Ooh. There's these, the Yard House. They got Cal. There's these billboards that are <laughs> spread out throughout the city in certain parts, right? Yeah. Oh, and it's yeah. this dude, Wade what? Wade, Wade Martin. Martin. Boggs. He's got billboards coming out of the airport. Going, but he doesn't you know, DJ. Apparently he does. Apparently he's remixed. Uh, well, he's a producer too, and he's worked. He did an EDM. But he looks like a real estate Flavor agent, Flav, I think, huh? But he looks like a real estate right, agent. Right, he looks like a lot of things. None of which. Are, <laughs> what so, is a real estate agent? <laughs> no, but there was a, there was a write up like on him a couple of like years Wayne ago. Martin, and, the, and they said he's just holding off for the for his uh, Vegas resident payday. And I'm like, keep holding off, motherfucker. But wow. I, I'm surprised nobody bit. You know, they oh. you know. On, on that note, with Wade Martin, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> should end this podcast. Okay. Hey, uh, Sis, thanks so much thank for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, thank you so much. Nice. And I didn't know Dude. we had 
beef like that. I it apologize. No. So I hope you ain't mad at me. Nah, I was never, I was never <laughs> mad. I felt like I disappointed you. Finally, nice to meet you, man. My <laughs> boys, I mean, Wait, yo, on. You guys you'll be met seeing me. I never met now, though. We never met. We Actually, we met, no, we met one time, like I told you before, um, at Hayes, a couple of years okay. back, like... It was late night. Whatever. What's Hayes? Hayes? The hey, nightclub? Is which is now. Jewel now. It's Jewel now. Oh, Jewel. Oh, and Man- oh um, when, it was, uh, when it was Hayes, that long club yeah. like exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. You were playing? Yeah. I was hanging out one night, and he was there, and I think Eddie introduced us. Had to be like uh, 10 years ago, maybe. Well, could have, uh, yeah, well, yeah, it could have been. Oh, I have a perfect ending to actually our, our story, our legacy. Okay. So it was a scam artist takeover at Live in Miami, mm-hmm. and you were in Miami. And they closed the shut the door down or something. But you were outside. And Eric Kubici. It was you and somebody else. It was you and your homie. Was it Kubici? And you guys couldn't Kubici get Kubici got me in. No, I got him in. Oh, no, you oh, didn't. Sh- oh, I, ca- I called you off the line. You ignored me. And you kept walking. No. I remember. I was like, you're crooked. He was like. C- crooked told a different story. No, 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 no. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Dude, that's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. I waited. For the door guy to come out. It wasn't he, Eric Kubici? Nah, it was me, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you must look just like him. Nah. I'm sorry. So I could have sworn it was him. <laughs> it was I thought Eric was actually running the so podcast. Busted. The whole time, I thought that was Eric. So, like, I walked, and I was like, yo, that's scissor hands. And you're like, and I, and I went up, and I'm like, yo, it's crooked. And you're like, oh, what up, what up? And I was just like, yo, let me, uh, let me try to get you in. And I literally spent, like, 15 minutes, like, talking to the door guy, getting the manager, and then we got you in. Oh, my God. I and love then, you. Thanks. No, no, no. And then he was like, I always knew you were a good kid. I always knew you were a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to you? <laughs> I said so. I, why does this whole thing, this whole time, I thought that was Eric Kubici? <laughs> no, oh, was, my God. He was like, I always, I always knew you were a good kid. I, I got to stop doing drugs, man. <laughs> That's fucking amazing, man. Eddie, Eddie, we cannot hang out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, sir. Right, Yo, I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.